and gentlemen, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the most fantastical day of your entire goddamn month, day, week, lifetime? It's time for the Rage Select Podcast. Boop, 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 boop. On Rage Select, I am Jeff. I'm Aaron. Oh, whew. And now I'm all tired out, Aaron. All right. Okay. Thanks for listening to the podcast, you, Thank everybody. you, guys. I just... Ah. Until next week. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start just recording. I want somebody to go back and make a super cut off all my all dumb intros, intros <laughs> for the podcast. Um... Yeah, so Aaron, how's it going? It's been a while it since is, you've been on the podcast. It is going. It is going. Yeah. I'm really excited for things coming. Can you tell the people about the things? Mortal Kombat X. That's all it is. Oh, okay. That's all it is. All right, okay, so all right. All right. Uh, I And summer movies. I have not been able to keep up with the trailers because it used to be it was like ooh a new Mortal Kombat trailer now it's like every two days you post something on Facebook and I'm just it's, like yeah I mean the last one was the the Jax's family yep. trailer yep didn't even watch it you want to tell me what it was what was uh, going on it was there? just the introduction of Jax and his uh, daughter um, Jacqueline or okay. Jack Jacqueline however you want to <laughs> say her name but um, it was because they did the same thing with Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, and right. Cassie Cage. And so it was the Cage family trailer. Uh-huh. And so this is the Briggs family trailer. Okay. Um, there's, there's, I do believe, three actual families in Mortal Kombat X. Okay. There's um, the Cages, obviously. Cages. The, the Briggses. The Briggses. And um, the Takedas, which is Kenshi and his son, uh, to, I I, I want to okay. say Takeshi, but I think that's the wrong. Okay, name, let me let me ask you a question. In the okay, so in the in the John in the Cage family trailer, right, right, Johnny Cage actually seemed to have aged a little bit. Right, Sonya Blade looked like she was twenty five. I mean, like, she. I, in my head, I was just like, it's that military white lady who aged well <laughs> okay that's what i i said in my head i mean i just I, I guess for me i was like is i mean you know you guys have she's a cynthia bunch of brand rothrock. New... rothrock that's who it is okay cynthia rothrock. Still, <laughs> anybody knows have... who that is she but... looked like she hadn't aged a goddamn right. day yeah. her voice did yeah i'll give it that her voice did um in, but... the, in the in the briggs family did it look like there was aging oh Jax, he just got bigger oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, he, they're like wow this guy's still working out like he still has like human parts right we got to give him bigger arms arms and so like they did he's got like uh, i think like with the detail like there's some gray in his like goatee mm. and stuff but it's like i was i was just happy that Jax was back because he's that one of my favorite is so. his it does who's he married to then? exactly so I'm this like, is the thing uh, i know they were is it predator it's predator it's, pre- it's, it's probably predator, pro- lady it's predator, predator. Is lady predator. It is. um <laughs> they probably d- d- they s- probably saw my tweet okay and they chose not to answer it because it i don't know th- Another realm, you know, they I'm sure they, they still try to cross their T's and dot their I's sure. and not try to piss people off. But they were like, tweet us questions for the combat cast that was on Thursday. Yeah. And so I was just like, Nether Realm Studios, hashtag combat cast, Briggs Family Trailer, hashtag who's the mom. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, who's the <sighs> and so but also my reason they it might come up in the story, it might not, but I'm I'd like to know because if it wasn't Sonya, <laughs> uh, or Melina, or, or <laughs> possibly, I mean, you know, like maybe Katana. Hey, yeah, but I thought Katana. I oh wait, or was that just in the movies with Katana, Katana and Liu Kang. Kang? No, it was in the it was in the, was in the game. game as well. Like I don't know. Mortal you Kombat this weird thing about that. We're sitting around wondering about the genealogy of yeah. the characters of Mortal Kombat. Whatever. Like, Whatever. Huh. I'm ready. So they I'm oh, ready. okay. So they they announced. I mean, uh, have they filled out the roster yet? Yeah, the entire character select screen is filled out now. Okay, okay. Um, it's like 29. Who are you most looking forward to? Uh, I don't know. Yep. Every is like with all. With, that's the one thing that's really piquing my interest. With all these variations, I'm like really interested to just really be that nerd and sit down and go through every single character to yep. see who I like, what play styles I like. Um, I'm really looking forward to Takeda because he has like Omega Red whips coming out of his arm because okay. he has this crazy battle suit. Um, Jax. <laughs> um, Are all the, I haven't even looked at the roster. I mean, I know that like obviously you're going to have Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Scorpion and Sub-Zero but, in there, yeah. Uh, do they have the, are the cyborgs in there? Nope. Not at all. Not at all. Motherfucker, I like yeah. man. Those were my th- those guys were my jam back in the old days yeah, of Mortal Kombat three. Yeah, it's a um, mi- it's a true mixture of old characters and new characters. But one thing that I saw, and this is just because 
like I said, I'm a nerd. So many people wanted different uh, characters. Like, it's like, oh, bring back Baraka or bring back Shang Tsung. Right. But with these variations, mm-hmm. they're kind of putting those characters in other characters. Like, they announced this one character, Aaron Black, who got it, uh, his reveal in the comic book. Okay. And so they brought this character from the comic book into the video game world. Well, he fought one of, I think it's like Terracotta soldiers, whatever the race Baraka is. Okay. He fought one of them, mm-hmm. cut off their arm, okay. and took the blade out of their arm okay so in one of his variations he has that blade on his back okay so he has like baraka's shank shank moves i was just like well that's well there's baraka but baraka's actually in the story they've actually like revealed baraka's in the story so i'm sure there's going to be like hey you can select baraka man but I swear to god any fighting game that goes past like two iterations just gets so <laughs> complicated yeah like, like the, lore, the lore yeah. the yeah. lore is ridiculous and um I, it's actually like wanted me to like really start maybe looking at the comic book just to like have a, an understanding of what's going into this Get the game. uh the stephen king novelization right Mortal yeah. Kombat one. yeah <laughs> 700 pages long yeah, for real. turns out that that was mostly just childhood trauma the yeah. entire time but you know as long as they don't follow mortal kombat 2 annihilation i'm good oh uh, man what, <laughs> what oh i just got a perfect idea all right so like I know it'll take forever for them to run out because they put Freddy in the last game and then they right. put Jason in this game, right? right? I want them to put goddamn Tim Curry from It into Mortal oh, Kombat. Oh, Pennywise? Yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> Crazy clown, and then like his special attack is turned into a giant spider. And no, like, rap, I, wouldn't, rap, rap, rap. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pay. I oh, wouldn't. by the way. He wins. He's like, they all float down here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you let me know. You let me know when you get to that level in Bloodborne. You oh, let me know because I probably won't be able to play it. <laughs> God damn, man! Like I don't even get affected by video game spiders, but uh, oh shit! Too man, in Uncharted Three, yeah. When you had, I was like, I was just like, I don't know which <laughs> way I'm going. I can't look at the screen right <laughs> now. Why is this? And like, yeah, my friend gave me the, uh, he gave me the heads up. He was like, there is going to be a part in Uncharted Three. You will have a hard time playing. And I was like, why would I? He's like, because I had a hard time playing it. I'm going to tell like, you right now, there's going to be a part of Bloodborne. And what's what's interesting is that you're going to be playing through the game, and then you're going to get to this one part, and you're going to be like, oh, that's the part Jeff's talking about. That's not the part that I'm talking oh, about. Oh, shit. Nope, nope. It's later. It's worse than that. It made me... I mean, you know, I've fought a hundred spiders in a zillion video games. It's not a big deal, and it was just... Lights will be on. Girlfriend will be sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's where it's going to come down to. Um, <laughs> so Mortal Kombat. But, okay, so, uh, like, I, I hope I hope Ed Boone listens to this podcast uh, because Mr. Mr. Boone... It sounds so weird to say yeah, it like that. Mr. Uh, Boone. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Boone um, oh, you know, you've done your injustice. You did your Mortal Kombat 9. It's great. Mortal Kombat X is coming out soon. Sir, can we please get Shaolin Knights 2? Please. Or Shaolin Monks 2. Shaolin Monks 2. Oh, I love that game so much. It's like one of the best co op games it I've was ever amazing. played. It was so awesome. My friend and I played it all the way through and then like went back with Scorpion yeah. and Sub Zero. Yeah. Played through. Oh, that game is so good. They should totally rematch that. Like, I was looking for something to play with Grant on Patreon. Uh, uh, you almost threw it in? or Well, it's just, <laughs> the problem, uh, you know, it's, it's like, there's this one guy on the website who really wants us to go back and play old Xbox games. And, you know, like, I don't necessarily, like, when we were trying to think of a new game, I, I was like, I was trying to figure out something that Grant and I could play together. Right. And I thought, oh, what about the, the Warriors, right? That was yeah. a game that was co-op and yeah. it's supposed to be good. And I've never really played it. So I went on my PlayStation 3, and you can buy it as a PS2 game on the PlayStation 3, and I loaded it up, and I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I'd almost rather it be a PlayStation 1 game because yeah. those are at least crisp when you look at them, whereas PS2 games are all just fuzzy and blurry. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, it makes me remember that, oh, yeah, I play games like this more, more. than I haven't played games. Like, yeah. most of my life, games look like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess that's not true. I mean, you know, that, your old 8-bit, 16-bit That, that, that stuff. filter, man. That fuzz filter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I understand, like, at the time, like, coming from the, the really hard ridges of PS1, one. like, it looked great. It was amazing, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, stuff like like the Metal Gear Solid HD collection where they've up it from a PS2 game, great. If they did a little bit of work to the Warriors and made it look new, yeah. great. But, like, uh, I, I thought for a second about trying to go back and play Kingsfield. 
uh, okay. which is like very one of the very first From Software games because it, a lot of people. I, I honestly think that Demon Souls is where you really start tracking the Souls series. But with Bloodborne out, I thought you know oh maybe you we'll go, go back all and play the way back to the beginning. old one yeah. right. I mean like, it's so old that it doesn't have analog stick support, <laughs> so it's forward and back, strafe Sweet. left, strafe right, right with the D pad. Turn left and right with the oh, L1, wow. R1, and look up and down with L2 and R2. Um, but then I started. I'd be dead. I, <laughs> then I looked at a video of Kingsfield and was just like, "This looks like crap, man. <laughs> this just looks like complete garbage. I'm getting eye cancer just looking at this." It's like let's play Counter Strike. No, let's play the first Doom. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> even the first Doom. I mean, even PC games from back in that time, you can still jack yeah. a lot of them up. Yeah. And they look okay. But, like, goddamn, PlayStation yeah. 1 and PlayStation 2 games do not age well. And Xbox is... Yeah, like, look uh, at the... I, I For me, like, being fighting games uh, with uh, the trailers that they just released for, like, the new Tekken, uh, Tekken 7, mm -hmm. like, I was just like, man, Tek Tekken's already on 7. I remember Tekken one like the arcade box and i yep. went back and look at a video on youtube i was like oh <laughs> it's I, a bunch of triangles and rectangles jumping around <laughs> i i think it's always instructional i think it's always instructional whenever a new game comes out and everybody's like look how beautiful it is and it's i don't like, want i don't want to deny games yeah. are beautiful. Like, like you know looking at gta 5 on the ps4 i'm like it's a beautiful game yeah right? but when Virtua Fighter 1 came out, it was literally the best looking video game I'd ever seen in my ever. entire life. You know? And now it's like what? You look at Final <laughs> Fantasy 7, it doesn't look bad today, but it's rough. And at the time, it was the greatest was looking the video game I'd yeah, ever seen. Yeah, like it was yeah. fucking revolutionary. Fantastic. It yeah. was revolutionary. Uh so it's always worth it to keep in mind, like, yeah, yeah, this shit looks real good. But remember 10 years ago what looked <laughs> yeah, good? Yeah, was it wasn't that way. Do you remember? <laughs> like the my you, you go back and play, you know, most video games don't even support 16 by 9. They're 4 by 3. Yeah. All those old video games are all 4 by 3 and it's just so jarring going backwards to it now. Um but yeah, enough enough reminiscing. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> Mortal Kombat 10 is obviously you're just can't wait. Game of the year. Game of the year. <laughs> yep. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it until it happens. You Game know, of the year. Uh, back when I... Uh, I have the played Bloodborne. Days. I have played Bloodborne. Yes. Because uh, the guy at the video game store whose name tag says Batman. Uh -huh. I hope you listen to this podcast because, yeah, <laughs> you, he still has not told me his real name. Okay. And his name tag says Batman. You call so him Bruce? I, I, don't call, I, don't, I don't even say it. Uh -huh. I'm just, he just like, yeah, that's my name. I'm like... Okay, um, let me have. <laughs> it's like I just like give me the game. Yeah, um, yeah man, we're we're all bored at work. Batman, yeah, yeah, all right? I get it. Fucking I get show it. me the video um, game. But he was like, and then it, this other guy who works there, he came walking Robin. up. Yeah, Nightwing. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were just like Bloodborne, man. That's gonna be the game of the year, Bloodborne. And I was like, I disagree. I truly disagree. I go, it is it is an amazing game for its right. I was like, it's an it's something. I say this, it's like a, it's like a, it is like Batman, where it's like, it's the game that we all needed, mm -hmm. but we didn't really, like, ha have to have it. It's, well, yeah, I, I, I've said this before, and so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, um, to, to harp on it too much, but like, um, like, this has happened a few times before in video games, all right? So, everybody loves Metal Gear Solid. Right. Not, I mean, I know some people have, but a lot of people, including myself, haven't actually played the MSX Metal Gear 2, right? Okay. The original Metal Gear 2 game that came out in Japan. The one, not the shitty NES right. Snake's Revenge, right? right? <laughs> but that game has, like, a Cyborg Ninja that comes out. It's got a lot of elements from Metal Gear Solid. It's, I mean, you can go look at YouTube videos. It has a lot of parallels between that game and Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. Almost like Kojima was able to make a first attempt at this right. and then really hammer out the parts that he liked into Metal Gear Solid, which there's a there's a very good case to be made to say that Metal Gear Solid is the best of, of all of the Metal Gear games in the franchise. Okay. I probably wouldn't agree with that, but there's definitely <laughs> a case to be made for that. It's definitely a classic, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dark Souls had a lot of Demon Souls in it. Like Demon Souls had a big swamp area. Dark Souls had a big swamp area. Right. Demon Souls had, you know, the the mechanics were very similar. There was a bunch of story beats that were similar. There were a bunch of just individual little encounter sections that were exactly the same between those two games. To the point where Dark Souls is is kind of like Demon Souls 2.0, right? right? Yeah. Um, 
Bloodborne is entirely original. Correct. So I feel like, and and, and some other people have even said that, uh, like a lot of even Demon Souls has roots in some of the From Software games. You, I didn't know there are four Kingsfield games. Oh, and there was like several other. Like uh, there was one that just came out on the PlayStation Network that was a PS One game called Shadow or something. God, I can't remember the name of it. That was another like first person RPG fucked up Eldritch Horror From Software okay. game. So it's like by the time that. D- Demon Souls came out. They had been working at that shit, and Demon Souls was about the best version. I think uh, I don't know. I've never played those, but for most people that I know that are, that are into that stuff, like I don't hear people talking about Kingsfield Four the same way that you talk about right uh, Demon Souls. But then Dark Souls was like taking Demon Souls and just refining every, every point, good yeah. part out of it. Bloodborne is a survival horror game. Yes, that's what people don't really understand about Bloodborne. Bloodborne is a goddamn horror game, and it is. Horrifying. Like there were plenty There's of times so that game. <laughs> where you're just like, what? No. I'm uh, still hung up. I I had friends visiting from Chicago this past weekend that I actually visited the week prior. Yeah. And they were all sitting in the room. It was uh, my two friends, my girlfriend, and myself. And I was just like, you know what? Before we leave, I'm gonna just like try to get some extra blood echoes on on Bloodborne. Right. And I was just like, you know what? They've never actually seen this game. Yeah. Hey, you see those things on the ground over there? They're like, yeah. I go, those are crows. Yep. Just wait. And I cranked up the speakers. (laughs) 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 My girlfriend sitting next to me, she goes, oh, my God. Yeah. What is that? I was like, that's a crow. She's like, that is not a crow. Yep. That's a demon bird. I was just like, yes, it is. This game is crazy. And they, like, Did you my, show him the giant pig? I didn't show him the giant <laughs> pig because we had to go. But like, he was, one of them was like, what, what's that thing in the background moving on? I was like, that's a werewolf. Yep. Or just a giant wolf, whatever you want to look at. And he goes, go up to it. <laughs> I'll go, no, no. I don't want to die right now. I just, we got to go. He's like, no, 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 go up to it. Really. I'm like, okay. So I go up to it and he goes, that thing is crazy. What? I was like, yeah, I I have to run now. Yeah. So I have to go to a place so I can kill this because I can't kill this right now because now his friend is coming. Yep. And so it yeah, it's it is it is one of those games where especially when I first put it in, I was just like it's well something's gonna pop out of every corner. I knew I knew it. The thing, I mean, people have uh, people have said this before. I think I've said it before, but it bears repeating. Bloodborne is not Demon Souls two or Dark Souls three. It's not at all. It's just it's a whole other thing. Yeah. And will it be game of the year? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have to lo- look, but right now, I mean, I like it. It's just, for me, I always have this weird delay with those games where mm-hmm. it's like uh, Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. Played all the way through them for review purposes, right? Right. Got all the way to the end, beat the game, went, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then, like, a year later, I'll have time to go back and really just get in there once people have sussed out a lot of the lore right. and stuff. And once the community has done work so that you can actually see what the fuck is going on, I've never been very good at figuring that stuff out. Right. <laughs> and in Bloodborne, it's more inscrutable than it's ever been, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, like, it takes a while, in my, for me at least, to appreciate those games because just playing them, you get real locked into this real narrow view of the yeah, combat. Okay. It's like, I just got to beat this boss. I just got to right. beat this boss as opposed to like, well, what is that boss and why? Who is he? Why is he there? But yeah, I could say How that I played it? all the way through the game and nothing. There's a fight in Dark Souls that people always remember, the Ornstein and Smo fight, where it's these two bosses that... Where it's a, they, they throw these two bosses at you that operate very differently from each other and it's in a tiny... Or it's a, a fair arena, but it's in a it's in an arena... These two guys, one of them is really aggressive, one of them is really strong, and from the moment you walk in, they are just on you, like, white on rice. Like, they will not, one of them's got a giant spear, the other one's got a huge hammer, and they just will not get off of you. And it's one of those places where everybody that's played Dark Souls gets to that point and just wants to stop playing playing, the game, right, because it's so hard. And when you beat them, it's so satisfying. Right. Um, I didn't really have that moment in Bloodborne. Um Maybe also because it was so inscrutable that I still had, just, I had no idea why I was doing yeah. things. It's more like Dark Souls 2 in that they say, go kill stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, except that I never really understood why I was killing stuff, even all the way to the end. And I did the work to get the secret third ending. And it was like, and then I went back and watched the other two endings, and I was like, secret third ending, more confusing than the other two. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, well, before we move on to the news, Aaron, have you been doing anything else besides uh, uh, playing Bloodborne and waiting um, for Mortal Kombat? You want to I, talk about? I guess I can uh, I can announce it now because it's been um, it's it's out there. Mm-hmm. But a uh, good old um, awesome company here in Austin, Texas, Rooster Teeth. I've been doing uh, fight choreography with them. Okay. Um, uh, under uh, the amazing leadership of Carmichael Simon, who's also a pretty uh, a legend in the world of martial arts and fight choreography and stuff like that. Um, but um, we're doing we've been doing uh, fight choreography for uh, Red versus Blue. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, season thirteen. Okay. Just just, uh, just aired the first April first. So two days ago. Uh, t- yeah, two days ago as yeah. of this recording. Yeah, April uh, yeah, April first, and it wasn't an April. Everybody thought it was gonna be an April Fool's joke because they were just like, <laughs> "Coming April first, season thirteen begins," and they're like, right. "Fuck off!" Right. <laughs> and, but then it was just like, "Here you go," and they're like, "Whoa!" And so it's been uh, it's been so, received pretty well. So, uh, are, is that like a mocap, or are you just like you doing filming that then animators then take as we reference are doing, material? We are doing motion capture. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And cool. so they're the 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 ante has been upped. They wanted this season to be pretty epic, and um, it is. It's it's been it's it's just awesome. One knowing that. There's a company like that here in Austin because I I had no idea. I was, sure. People were like Rooster Teeth. I was like, must be in L.A. <laughs> and, and so, but then like you know the day the day came where they're like, Aaron, Rooster Teeth. Here's the address, and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? It's down the street from my house. Yeah. <laughs> and so like yeah, and so it's really awesome like going in there and like just like getting to know these guys and like I get blown away like I'm. I'm an actor, I'm a martial artist, and I'm a gamer. But th- when I see people who do things that my brain couldn't comprehend, uh-huh. like sitting in front of a computer and like making worlds, yeah, I'm just like, I seriously just, I geek out over something that to them is just like their everyday. Yeah, you know, uh, it's like it's, it could be the same thing. Say with like you, you, you're like you're the backbone of rage. So like, and so I'm like, I try to like grasp like the things that you do. I'm just like, nah. That there's a reason why it's not. Hey, everybody, I'm Aaron, and this is Jeff. <laughs> like, there's a reason why I'm like, hey guys, what's up? I'm here again. Yeah, I'll see you next time. I'm yeah, here. I, I keep, <laughs> I keep uh, like recently it was it was weird because you tend to forget. And recently, uh, I was talking with somebody and. Uh, I had to do the math right. on how long I've been doing this. Right. And was like, oh, shit. Like, I mean, you know, you just rock it along one day at a time, and then you look at a calendar, and you go, like, oh, four? <laughs> He's like, god damn. What the shit? <laughs> yeah. Oh, god damn. Yeah. Um, and so, and, that, and that's the thing, because, like, all those things can be compared to something in someone's life. Like, you know, um, there are people who've been, like, working, like, video programming like web design all that stuff and right. like all that other like foolish things that I would never be able to comprehend but then from their perspective like my martial arts training they're sure. just like holy shit man yeah you've been training for 19 years you can I'm just like, do a flip yeah, whatever yeah. you want oh man it's what so awesome. and that's and that's the thing like even not even like with Rooster but just like friends in general yeah they're just like yeah man Aaron just do it. like we'll just just do a flip man <laughs> Just, just do it. Watch, this just, is gonna just do, do it. it. He's, he's gonna, gonna do it. Hey, hey, he's hey, gonna do it. Random person walking. Hey, stop. Hey, watch this. this. Yeah. And I do it, and they're like, "What?" I'm like, "It was just a flip." But yeah, no, to, it's, it's, yeah. it's it's it, it. I mean, that's something that um, I, I mean, like I guess I've thought about a lot over the course of my life because when I was taking when I I don't really do it as much anymore. I really need to get back into it. But you know, I spent like five years doing animation, and right? And drawing, yeah, yeah. And so many people will look at that and be like, "You're a fucking wizard." Yeah. And I'm like, "No, <laughs> dude, you just yeah. do it, and then like you just keep doing it." Like I wasn't. There's a difference between skill and talent, right? Yeah. And you can learn. You could learn how to draw faces if you sit around drawing faces all day, every day. I'm not especially good at it, right. but I, I do it. I mean, I know some guys that are just sickeningly talented are just like, well, I've always been able to paint the Mona yeah, Lisa. And I'm yeah. not, okay, fuck you. But, I mean, there's nothing there's nothing to it outside of – it's like playing the guitar, right? Yeah. Like, I know people who can play the guitar, and I'm like, I can't play the guitar. But I have no doubt that if I started today and sat down and just played the goddamn guitar, that I don't know, maybe five years from now, I'd be pretty okay-ish yeah, pretty at the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my uh, one of my instructors in, in the past, he always said it takes two weeks for someone to actually get the basics mm-hmm. and say, of anything. 
It's like if you, if there's seven days in a week and you take four of those days mm-hmm. and you commit to a, a good chunk of time to train whatever it is you're going to train. Yeah. Two weeks. So if you take two weeks, so eight days. Yeah. You will get down the basics. And then if you possess the skill. Yeah. You can actually build from those basics of what your own creation can be. Whereas if you c- continue to hone, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, if a month, two months, a year. If you keep up with that, then you're going to be pretty, pretty good. You're not going to be like, hey, I'm going to start playing at this bar on the weekend, even though some people do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, some people who, are really, who just have a real innate, they pick it up real yeah. easily, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's actually, it's funny. It's something, um, it's, it's something. That has come up on, you know, the Cracked podcast. Yeah. Which I was told. It's funny. I actually found I found a a, a Dark Souls podcast called uh, Bonfireside Chat of guys that went through all. I've just finished listening to every one of their Dark Souls podcasts, and now they're going through Demon Souls, and then there's Dark Souls Two, and they're just starting on Bloodborne now. Oh, so wow. I'm like, I'm covered in, in podcasts. But they talk a lot on. Uh, uh, they talked a few times on the Cracked podcast. Something that I think was really interesting that people that like the way that like movies and shit and even the way that fiction and the world and pop culture and a lot of different places tell you how to achieve some kind of goal like learning martial arts the yeah. guitar or drawing or or losing weight or getting yeah. in shape or balancing your finances or blah 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 it's always portrayed as something that you're either innately good at or it's like a sports training montage where yeah. five minutes later, <laughs> you're a karate yeah. master, right? Yeah. When in reality, it's about doing that shit all, all the, the time, time for a year. Yeah. And then you have it. And you got to be able to sit down and go like, like they talk about how they you never see portrayed the incredibly frustrating first hurdle. That when you're playing guitar and it just doesn't work and you just keep hacking away at it. And yeah. then... It just happens one day, and you're oh, oh shit, shit! I can yeah. kind of do this a little yeah, bit. Horse right. with no name. Right. Oh fuck! Yeah, <laughs> and then it's so frustrating that most people will give up in the beginning because they start and they go, "I'm not any good at yeah. this," and then they just go, they hit that fr- that 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 first that first bridge, right? And it's just like, I don't want to cross it. This is bullshit. And it's weird because <laughs> it's, it's almost like if you imagine in your mind, at least for me, when I've done it, especially in in both art, uh, it seems to go in these weird spurts, right? It's not like climbing a mountain. It's like running, running headlong, headlong into a wall, yeah. and then one day you just you running headlong into the wall again, and now you're just on the other side. Yeah, and you don't even remember like you didn't break it's through the wall. You just and yesterday you were smacking your face up against it, but now you're standing on the other side. You're just like, what? <laughs> so yeah, but you know what? Enough life lessons. Yes, it's time for the news, and we've got a big chunk bah, bah, bah. today because I'm sorry. Aaron, I know that you're not the greatest Nintendo fan. It's of the okay, world, man. But it's uh, okay. There's some things. There's some things I saw. There's some things that that um, got me a little, little, a little interested. I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm gonna say right now. Like I know Nintendo's a Japanese company, and maybe this doesn't mean the same. But who the fuck puts out a Nintendo Direct on April first? For who puts out a Nintendo Direct on April Fool's Day? I just and and if you're gonna put out a Nintendo Direct on April Fool's Day. They didn't have a single April Fool's joke in there. Nope. I didn't even look at, at the least, April at least Fool's com- stuff At this least year. commit somewhere. <laughs> I, I wonder, you know, okay, so uh, do you watch the last week tonight with John Oliver? Have you seen I the did, thing I that he did about, no. he did a thing about April Fool's Day where he's like, if you participate in April Fool's Day, you're an asshole. So yeah. raise your right hand and say, yeah. I'm not going to do, okay. What I wonder is that I feel the same way, and it almost to me feels like everybody feels the same way. Like, not just... Not just like I'm old enough that I've seen enough April Fool's Day, but this is like everybody is like, do fuck like, April Fool's Day. Like, yeah. Like last year, everybody seemed like they were kind of begrudgingly into it. And this year, it just seems like everybody was like, no, nah, go fuck no. yourself. Yeah. Even there, there's so many posts that I've seen that I was just like, oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on this one. Let me read this. Ro- wait, wait, what day? Fucking sh. Like, and so a friend posted on my Facebook wall a. Uh, uh, because he knows I'm I'm addicted to the Fast and Furious movie franchise. I'm yeah. addicted to it. And so the new April Fool's joke was Fast to the Future. Oh, yeah. So it was okay. like a Fast and Furious Back to the Future. Like tr- there's actual like a full trailer okay. that's like Vin Diesel in the like the DeLorean uh drifting through t- uh um Tokyo 
Okay. And I was just, and he's just like, he's like, just like old times. <laughs> and then I'm just like, I'd watch I, that I, movie. I, I, he's like, I was just like, <laughs> I, w- I, w- I would, I would, I definitely would watch that movie. But like, I commented back to my friend. I was just like. I know where you live. <laughs> I will come to your house. I will come to your house. Uh, all right. Well, okay. April April Fools for no April Fools. Nintendo put out a whole bunch of stuff. Now this isn't actually the um, the order that they release this stuff. I've got. I'm I'm going off of a news roundup that I found on Game Informer. Um, but we're gonna go down and I'm gonna kind of jump around a little bit in this. Uh, no, you know what? I'm just gonna go down. Yeah. I'm gonna go down the list. This is totally out of order, but this is the this is the, some of the stuff that they announced. Um, Street Pass is getting some kind of crazy new premium theme slash mini game collection kind of thing. You remember that was the part where I was like, "Don't care, don't care, yeah. don't care." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Don't care, don't, don't care, don't care. care. I, yeah, <laughs> if you're into the Street Pass thing and you're into the Me Plaza thing and you're into that, great. More power to you. Jump on. I it. could fucking care less. It to me, it's just PlayStation Home 2.0, and I could fucking care less. PlayStation what? Home. What? <laughs> so it doesn't exist anymore, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> no. oh, what I find weird is you remember folding at home. Yep. I thought that was kind of a cool idea that I wonder why they didn't put out on the PS4. I don't know. Um, I guess that was back when back when we all had PlayStation 3s but no games to play. Yeah. Like, this is a cool screensaver yeah, and I'm curing awesome. cancer. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mario Maker has a release date for September. Um, for those of you who have been hiding under a rock, Mario Maker... They also talked a lot about how this is the 30th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers, yeah. where it was like, Anna and I were yeah, like, we were like uh, no, it's not. Like, yes, one, two, three, it oh, is. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, Mario Maker is basically, you can make your own Mario levels, yep. and you can put them online, and you can use original, well, it was original Super Mario World. All the way up to Mario. New, new Mario. Yo, or yo, no, it was yo, it won yo, three World. Yo, and, one three World, because yeah. you were brought up, where's Mario 2? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo, what about uh, Doki Doki Panic? You're not talking about that anymore? <laughs> Aw. Um, I could say I can honestly say I understand. I definitely understand that. Um, I definitely understand why they're making Mario Maker, right? Yeah. I can honestly say that I don't have much interest in it. No. I mean, uh, I know that there's an online community of people that make like just balls hard Mario yeah. levels. Well, that, that's what I brought up when we watched it. I was saying, you know, someone is going to purposefully make the hardest level, but then you said, well, the way they have it is yeah, you think- have to be able to beat your creation yeah i think that's true i don't think you can put so. something up unless you're able to actually finish yeah, it because that would that would suck <laughs> i just don't know i mean it's weird because it almost seems it seems like the people that are into that yeah are into it on like the pc right yeah that's where you can get at it is yeah. you can find these places where people made these super hard mario levels and it's like pc gamers well, i don't know i don't imagine there's a lot of crossover between we you gamers and pc gamers it just it seems like an odd decision i don't know i I guess though you know just recently mario or uh, nintendo released uh mario and donkey kong minis rise of the minis like star party thing which is their weird construction game kind of (laughs) lemmings-esque clockwork mark it's so it's so weird (laughs) it's so bizarre uh, kind of came out. Nobody. I mean, Mario Party Ten came out, and I didn't wow. even. I mean, I'm, I've got it. I'm just waiting for <laughs> the right day to play it. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, I'll play Pillars of Eternity first. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the new Fire Emblem game had a very interesting trailer. Uh, yes. This is one that was really interesting. The new 3DS Fire Emblem game is going to have like two full-on different campaigns. Yep. Uh, one Yoshido that w- and uh, Hor- Nor. No, no. Nor? N-O-H-R. Yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, it looks like the entire game is going back to more of a, um, an Asian yeah. uh, uh, more medieval theme. combat yeah. looking kind of thing. Because the last one was very much like Knights in Armor and yeah. you know, very, stuff like f- that. Very feudal area with this trailer yeah. and storyline. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of there was a lot of cutscenes that all looked very pretty. I mean, they were all very pretty. There was very little gameplay, but it looks like uh, from what they said that that what did they say? The light side, the kind of good side, is your more traditional RPG. Yeah, it's straightforward. It's going to be straightforward. It's going to be easier. And then the other side, the dark <laughs> side, is going to be more difficult, uh, but more complex. Uh, yeah, a complex story with more difficult play styles. Like, 
why, why? That's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm all. We want everyone to be good. I think that, <laughs> I think that from a, I think that from a, um, a gameplay perspective, I really like the idea of being able to play through an entire campaign twice yeah. to see both sides both of sides, it. Yeah. I think that's really cool and gives you an opportunity to have a lot more depth to your storyline. Um, I do, however, wonder if that's a 30-hour light side campaign and a 30-hour 30 30 dark side campaign because yeah. I ain't got 60 <laughs> hours <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> nothing! Oh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let alone being hunched over yeah. uh, 3DS. <laughs> Which I okay, look, man, <laughs> that new 3DS is great. I never got I never got around to beating Majora's Mask. But the new 3DS, did I show you the new 3DS? Yes, you did. It's fantastic. It works yeah. great. I love playing on it. It was really cool. Um, I still to this day cannot understand why Nintendo doesn't put out another one of those um, add-on things that will let you play a 3DS game on, on the Wii the U, Wii. right? Like yeah. it's got all the controls. It's got two screens. It's got a touch screen. I would pay them a hundred dollars to be able to put 3DS games on the Wii U because when you got a 30-hour RPG, I want to play it on my couch. I don't ne want to play next it th next April first. Okay. <laughs> oh, they better not <laughs> come to your house, Reggie. <laughs> Kick down Reggie's front door. <laughs> also, by the way, Nintendo Direct still has the most stilted human beings on the planet <laughs> talking, especially that dude with the glasses. He's robot. Fucking. He is a. Ro he really is a, a robot. robot. But it looks good. Um. Let's see, Box Boy and New Puzzles and Dragons are coming to the eShop. Eh, I don't care about that. Okay. You already play New Puzzles and Dragons on your phone, and Box Boy, don't care. It's Box Boy. Uh, <laughs> Splatoon is getting Amiibos. And of course. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo, okay, I got to tell you, um, they're, they're, they've, they've, I feel like they're, uh, um, they're like a kid who just got cable, right? <laughs> like when you're a kid and your friend just gets cable for the first time, he's like, "Oh my god, do you know there's a whole Pac-Man show?" And it's like, "Yeah, man, we've yeah, all been yeah, watching that yeah, for dude, a long time." We got it. Nintendo's <laughs> like, "Oh, you mean people like to buy these little plastic figures?" You know, just let's okay, a million of them. <laughs> well, it, and, and with every video we saw, I do believe I, I'll say every other video we saw because yeah. we saw the, in that in that whole little. The presentation. The presentation. I think every other video, there was an amiibo that went with the, yep. the video. <laughs> yep. So let's see. Splatoon is going to come. There's going to be three different amiibos for it that will let you do some single-player missions. There's also a 1v1 competitive yeah. mode with one person on the gamepad and one, one person, person on the on TV. TV. Meh. Um, <laughs> there's a free-to-play Pokemon, Rumble World, coming to the 3DS. Yeah. I don't know. Kind of looked like garbage, but I mean, it looked it looked like super basic, right? Yeah. And it looked like one of those games. I mean, I think we saw a little bit of this last time. It's one of those games where it's like, yes, you can play until you die, and then when you die, you have to wait three hours or buy yeah. <laughs> diamonds with yeah. real money. And it, like, great. Just another off. reason to feel sorry for Pikachu. Yep, that's all it is. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World uh, is coming out this fall. Had a new trailer for that. <laughs> I could. Uh, they 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 made a big deal about like. <laughs> We've got a super <laughs> duper easy baby mode for people who don't know how to play video games. That was so like, let's insult people, but at the same time, let's make them feel like, yeah, if this is if you're not a hardcore gamer, play this mode. If you are a hardcore gamer, play this mode. And then they're just like, it's really easy. And I was like, oh wow. I could say <laughs> having played a fair amount of the last few Nintendo games that were kind of platformers based on their characters, you don't need an easy mode. You don't. This isn't exactly Bloodborne, man. Yeah. This isn't for like, it's not like you go to World 1-1 one, one of of uh, Kirby's Epic Yard, or what the latest Kirby... Uh, uh, fuck, I don't even remember what it was called. I gave it to Amanda. The last <laughs> Kirby game that came out, and you start playing, and the first enemy is just like... <laughs> oh, shit! This whoa, Kirby game is whoa. serious! <laughs> no. Uh, they're also making a yarn amiibo for... You know, they're really, that is huge. It's very big. It takes big. up like the whole left side of the Wii U control. Yep. <laughs> uh, that'll let you have a second Yoshi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not even another character, not no. even something. You just get double the Yoshi. Double Yoshis. Yeah, baby. Honestly, I can really care less. <laughs> Yoshi is kind of garbage. <laughs> I don't like Yoshi. I know you all like Yoshi, but fuck him. Fuck, <laughs> fuck Yoshi. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason that Mario <laughs> lets him fall and die while he <laughs> jumps to safety. It's true. Uh, Mario Kart 8 is getting 200 CCs, um, as well as a whole bunch of other shit. Animal yeah. Crossing oh, DLC, yeah. 
bunch of new costumes and then a free 200 cc update which looked pretty it looked pretty awesome pretty rad actually, yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I mean I, it's funny because i remember mario kart came out last year i got it we played it i don't know if we ever actually did like full-on dojo videos for it i think I we played think it for so. like the one yeah. year anniversary um i think they said it's the 25th anniversary of no no, no we kart. played it on the N- site no no i'm just saying in the video oh that oh. they were saying it was because it came out in 1992 oh, or something i wasn't like that. paying attention to that part of the yeah, video. I was just but like, it was it was it was something it was uh, they s- i know they said that w- it's been a while since it came out yeah and so um well it's interesting because all of the all of the previous mario karts have had 50 100 150 cc yeah all the way up to 150 uh, yeah 150 was, 92 was yeah. the first one so what is that 10 years, 13 years? Yeah. Um 23. 23 years? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, so sorry. it's not a it's not a Man. true milestone. Right. But they're like, "Hey, just wait two more years." Yeah. yeah hey, we'll we'll get you guys something. You know, it's actually <laughs> funny now that I think about it like there was a lot of weird DLC stuff in this presentation. Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart being one of them, but uh, yeah, I mean Mario Kart, I I played it. It was a good game and it cool that they're bringing an update yep. i i never been able to get into animal crossing so i don't like the dlc for that was kind of like eh. i just know there's videos on youtube um <laughs> but speaking of animal crossing <laughs> animal crossing happy home designer oh, yeah. all right ladies and gentlemen yeah i didn't think animal crossing could get any more <laughs> worthless and fucking stupid but guess what this new animal crossing. He was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I'm a big enough man to say what I'm wrong, Aaron. Oh, man. Okay, so now you're no longer even doing the garbage chores of Animal Crossing. You were designing interior design home decoration for the stupid animals in Animal Crossing. So people like the I'm a bookworm, and yeah. so you got to put a bunch of bookshelves. You have to put some bookshelves in there. You and want a rug? You can, you put a rug down. And then at the end, you hit the button, and all the yeah. animals come in, and then you have yeah. a party. You have flower pots inside. I yeah. I'm sorry, but I was I I ended up looking at my phone during uh, that part like, of the video. What I was just the like, okay, shit. cool. The only thing that's kind of interesting is that they're going to have a bunch of cards that have yeah um, NFC uh, chips in them uh, that you could use instead of an amiibo. You have a card. It's like great, another awesome. thing that you won't it's manufacture a- enough of that'll sell out <laughs> yeah. in a minute. Um, I thought the other thing that was really weird was there they have a an a, a, a peripheral that you're going to be able to get with it that you can put the cards onto that will then transmit that card information to your 3ds if you have a 3ds or a 3ds, 3DS XL, XL or a 2ds yeah. because only the new one has the NFC stuff in it. Um, really weird. I wonder how much that is. I mean, like, it could almost be like, can you play the game without it? I right. wonder. I'm sure you uh, could. You just won't be able to. I don't. I don't know how the save works on that. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I <laughs> sorry. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? There's a bunch of. They talked about a bunch of indie games. Um, a lot of them were old games that I've already played. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple that looked interesting. What was that one that was like a? Um, there was that one that was kind of like a barbarian. Like oh, science what was it called? In. But yeah, it lo- it looked really cool. Uh, and then there was another one that was. Um, uh, like it looked like a kind of a 2D platformer. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Nope. Slain. Slain. Yeah, that's what it was. And then I don't remember what the other one was. Uh, to race the sun, space Hulk, back to bed, Runbo, life pixel, Badland. No, I don't think it was Badlands. I don't know. I know it was Slain. I know Slain was that one. Slain looked really good. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I saw it for a second because they they concentrated yeah. on like. Octo Dad. I'm like, Dude, yeah, and it. Don't Starve Giant Edition. I'm yep. like, I've been playing that for a while on PS4. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what? You know what? Look, if all you've got is a Wii U, great. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you're going to get access to Congratulations, you're going to get some good stuff. Those are great games. It's hard for me to get real hyped up about it because I've already played a right. lot of the, like, Race the Sun. That shit's been out forever. Um, but. But I got to ride like the wind, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you something that I didn't see coming that was really interesting was an Attack on Titan 3DS game. Yeah. Um, that was... Per- my ears perked up. Yeah. <laughs> I was really fascinated because like, I uh, I think... I know there have been a couple of, of Attack on Titan games. 
I know there was one kind of like free to play game or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. Uh, or something that somebody made on the PC, yeah. or there might have been like a DS import game or something like that. But um, this one looks cool. I mean, you know, it's got you zipping around. I wonder, you know, the thing is that I wonder what they're going to do because they're using characters from Attack on Titan, right? Yeah. But if you've, okay, minor spoiler for Attack on Titan, but if you haven't <laughs> seen Attack on Titan, a lot of Attack on Titan is them getting fucked, fucked the up. fuck y- up. Yeah. It's not them successfully defending. It's, it's the Game of Thrones of anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that character. No, you don't. <laughs> they they kind of lose a lot. And I'm like, well, if I'm really good at this game, how the fuck are you going to make that into a thing? Because, well, it, that's not. No. Okay. I think this is an ad. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh it says it's playing the video, but it's not. Anyway, um, so I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. It looks good. It looks good. It looks like it'll be fun. I guarantee you it'll be a bestseller for the 3DS. I hope hands so. Hands down. Know. And I think that with the new 3DS, with uh, like because I can actually turn the 3D up and it doesn't give me a headache, right. I think that having that 3D of that whole like zipping with those little thingies through the city and stuff, yep. that would look really cool. Yeah, it would. And it would make it, would make it uh, really nifty. Um, so yeah, I kind of want to get my hands on this, but uh, there's that. I just want to hear like them just shout, Mikata! <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they'll do okay, b- wait, major spoiler for for Attack on Titan. I wonder if they'll do like then you get to be a Titan for a little while because that could be interesting. That would be, that really be interesting cool. because also, didn't they say that um, you get the first two episodes? Yeah, I think to tr- well to try Free to, download or to something like that. drum up interest. I think they said they put the first two episodes on the, the Ninten- Nintendo Nintendo eShop, yeah. so you can watch them. Like, great. Actually, you yeah. know what? I want to go. That's not enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That's not enough. That's, that's kind of <laughs> it's, cruel. It's, and it's good. It's good. It's good because then you'll be like, oh, that's okay. I understand. But the first two episodes, you need. You at least need the first five. Yeah. You need the first five to yeah. really get your teeth into what Attack on Titans really is. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, the first two are just a giant bummer, right? Yeah. It's just a huge. Yeah. It's like, why Ooh. do I want to watch this? I mean, I can't remember. I mean, it's cool, but at the same time, it's nothing that you're going to be like, I want to I want to be that guy. So <laughs> many so many episodes of that show end with people weeping, screaming, or dying. <laughs> yes. And at some point, I was just like, Look, man, I'm not all about gender stereotypes, but fuck, dude, man up. It's quick. Like, oh, God. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. They uh, announced a whole shit ton of new Amiibos, which is great. Yeah. Um, well, it's no, I, I take it back. I don't care. Um, I, I understand the Amiibos are really popular. I know that a lot of people are super it's interested a, in getting them. It's great for the collectors out there. Uh, I know people are having a hard time getting them. Like, apparently the Greninja... Uh, one because mm-hmm. a lot of them are retail specific, They're like Target specific. Oh wow, I so, didn't know that. Like I think that Ness is like Target specific, and they oh. opened up because uh, I was reading an article uh-huh. on the site that I use for news, a Game Informer site of people who were <laughs> Nintendo posted a picture of Yoshi and a Yoshi egg by like a fern, the Yoshi amiibo and an egg, and they were like, "Oh, it looks like Yoshi's getting a head start on an Easter. What amiibo are you most excited for?" <laughs> and oh my God, <laughs> they were just like. like I wanted Ness, you monster! <laughs> because apparently, like, it was... Look at the Target website. Countdown timer finished. Ness went on sale. Refresh. Page is broken. Refresh. Page is broken. Refresh. Page is broken. Refresh. Sold out. Wow. Uh, because they're just not... They're not stocking enough of them. They're not manufacturing enough of them, or they're letting people buy too many. Right. Uh, apparently, Greninja went on sale like in the middle of the night, like from Toys R Us's website. Mm-hmm. So, like while people were asleep, went on sale, sold out in an hour. Just completely, you, know, you can't get any. Uh, so, it's great they're bringing new, new, n- you know, new amiibos in. But the way that they're selling, like Nintendo, you need to step your shit up. Yeah, and like supply is not meeting demand. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know that in economics, baby. Maybe, High school. <laughs> maybe they're not. You know, maybe they're doing it on purpose. But if I was Nintendo, Nintendo's been. In some weird financial situations right. recently, I'm like, Nintendo, if you can make a shitload of money by selling the crap out of these things, make a sell the crap. Money, yeah. yeah, sell the crap out of them. Um, let's see. I'm going to skip that one because it's my most favoritist of the, all the news. Uh, I'm going to roll down a few of these other things first. Um, Smash Brothers. 
a lot. Is getting Mewtwo. Mewtwo. Is getting Lucas yep. from Earthbound. Is getting a whole shit ton of DLC for the Ami or from the um the not Amiibo, uh, uh, the create, Amiibo the characters. Create, the create characters. Yeah. Guy. It looked like it actually, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't, I was kind of skipping through it because we had some limited time today, but um, it looked like they gave the characters some new powers, I yeah. guess. Uh, uh, with with the outfits that go on to the character, they get those similar powers, like Mega Man, Power Man. Um, Proto Man. Pro, Proto Man, not yeah. Power, Man. Power Man. Sorry. <laughs> don't don't excite Marvel, Jason. Sorry. Jason's just... <laughs> yeah, sorry, his, sorry. Sorry, Jason. Yeah, his I'm sorry. fire sense started sorry. tingling. Like, sorry. <laughs> I'm just really excited for Daredevil <laughs> coming to Netflix. And so that's... It well, just how long is it until that comes out? Like a week. Oh, really? Yeah, it comes oh, out wow. like next week. They're, Netflix is really stepping their shit up. Yes, man. they are. <laughs> yes. Um, um, but yeah, um, Proto Man. Yes. Um, Link. From uh, oh, yeah, from Legend Zelda. of Zelda, and then, and then like, there's like a Smash Brothers uh, like a T-shirt. T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> and then some other character that I didn't know who it was. It was like like a knight looking guy with a name I didn't. Oh yeah, remember, I remember what it was. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. So Mewtwo is coming. Lucas is coming. You got some new things. Um. And then there's also a website where you can vote for who you want the next DLC yeah. character in Smash uh, Brothers to be. Yeah, SmashBros.com or something. Like and they were very yeah. quick to point out. It was like a okay. ballot. Yeah, here's a ballot. Yeah. Like, so, but you can't. We can't do just whoever you say. Yeah, I like how they're saying like, put in your vote, put in your ballot. But just remember, <laughs> yep. I want to. Um, I want to make like a campaign of people. It's like. <laughs> All right, everybody, write in Marcus Phoenix. Yeah, Marcus like, Marcus Phoenix. All right, okay, okay, and then they're like, who's number one? Marcus Phoenix. What? What? That doesn't, oh. that doesn't make any sense. Who's number two? And it's like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, the hunter from Bloodborne. The, right. <laughs> the mimic chest from Dark Souls. <laughs> what? What is going on? <laughs> What's number three? Luke Skywalker. <laughs> what the? Ch- okay. We can't, we can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. We can't. Um. Let's see. Uh, Nintendo 64 and DS games are coming to the Wii U Virtual Console. That's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, Wii U game. There's there's one DS game that I would really, really like to play for some bonus content, but I doubt they will ever release it. I don't even know if they released it domestically. What is that? Uh, it's uh, uh, the Asu Tateke Oendon series. It was... Uh, in in the U.S., it was Elite Beat Agents. Oh, okay. Uh, it was yeah, a little yeah. tapping rhythm game. Yeah. Um, but in Japan, the songs were all like crazy J-pop. In America, oh. they, it was like, there was like a share song, right? Yeah. But in Japan, it was crazy <laughs> J-pop. <laughs> and that shit, I got stuck in my head so hard. <laughs> and it's like while you're doing this little tapping mini game, on the top there's a a, a story, and they're always the most ridiculous Ooh, stories of, of all time. Of course. Um, I remember. I never managed to beat the final level of Vasu of uh, Oendon two on the highest difficulty level because that was how I was with this game. It's like I beat it, everything on easy, everything on medium, everything on hard, and then it was on ultra hard. Oh, and man. I had one more level left to go, and I was on the last level, and I was doing it because it's like just fucking tapping the shit out of my <laughs> screen. And I was trying to do, and I was doing better than I ever had before. And I was at an airport, right? And I was sitting in an airport, uh, and I had my bag on the seat next to me, and I was sitting at the terminal, and I was like headphones on tapped over this just like tapping the screen like fucking crazy just like, and this guy walks up and he's just like sir 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 and he wanted me to move my bag so him and his wife could sit down and i finally was just like i paused it i was like what he's like can you move your bag and i was like yes and then i went back and just like immediately failed and i was like oh and then i just got yeah, i, had to, I one, didn't get up and walk away because it's one of those moments where you're just like i cannot play this game right now right. because well no <laughs> i had to get up and walk away because i didn't you know like i understand how ridiculous it would be but at the moment i wanted to be like could you not have waited for 90 <laughs> seconds i was about to finish the last thing in this video game and i was obviously doing something and you just have to sit down right <laughs> Anyway, how dare you, human? Right. <laughs> so, DS games and Nintendo 64 games. Uh, I think they said they just put out the, one of the Yoshi games. Uh, on the DS games, apparently you can use the touchpad as your yep. bottom screen. Yep. Uh, great. They They're put out uh, making Mario. Making different ways for you to play stuff. I just, if I had that, I'd Star Fox. Star Fox 64. And as I, as I said earlier, uh, <laughs> when we were watching that, I was like, WCW versus NWO. Yeah. Let's go. Where is it at? Come on, Nintendo. Nin- Nintendo 64 games. Let's bring it back. See, I never Best had... Best wrestling games ever. Never had one. Never really 
got into I love it. it. So, uh, and then two more, and these are the most awesome of uh, announcements. I saved the best for last. Number one, they're bringing a new Fatal Frame game to the U.S. So awesome. Looked good. So awesome. Looked really good. Like, if there was ever a goddamn game to put on the Wii U, it was a Fatal Frame game. That's the one. Glad they're bringing it out here. I love that franchise. And then number two, Aaron and I are watching this trailer. (laughs) And we're sitting there like, and Aaron's like, is this a new Fire Emblem game? And I'm like, I don't think so. It looks like... Like Shin Megami Tensei to yeah. me. I was like, no, it's Fire Emblem. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, it's all Devil Summoner. Modern. That's definitely yeah. <laughs> that's some that's some Devil Summoner. And, and then, then the robot came on, and yep. he was like, it's both of them. Yep. <laughs> I guess I'd forgotten that they had announced this in 2013, but. I, psh- and I over my head because I just I I just never paid attention, but oh, uh, it looks fucking rad, man! That's, like that's that's a peak interest one where I might buy it for a friend just to go over there mm. and maybe play it, you know, but watch him play it for sure. I gotta see when it comes <laughs> out. I don't know. Uh, well, uh, we're not. Or just come over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll like, just you can come just over here. Take my Wii U for a yeah, while. I'll just come over here after I'm done with it. But um, yeah, that that game. I mean. It looks like the sort of thing that Grant would absolutely hate. But <laughs> I look at it and go, you know, I've never really been into the Shin Megami Tensei series. I mean, I, I like Persona 4, but I've never really been into the Devil Summoner series. I was all about Devil Summoner. Uh, 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 Digital Devil Saga, mm-hmm. 1 and 2. Yep. That was my shit. Okay. I love that one. But I like Fire Emblem, and I like Atlas, so, hey, yeah. looks good to me. <laughs> yeah. Looks good to me. By the way, yeah. you haven't been on in a while. Uh, did you see the, the Persona 5 trailer? I did not. Okay, we'll have to watch it. Watch it right, the break. All right, all right. all right. So that is that is that. that uh, is the Nintendo news. That's all the <laughs> Nintendo news is fit, is fit to talk about. We've got a bunch of other things here, and I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to cut some of these things because we are almost at an hour. So uh, last week uh, there was been this horrible. I don't know if you've been keeping up with the whole Kojima. He's leaving, and then I it's don't like they know what's took going on money. with that. I thought I've there was something announced yesterday. I'm it might have just been an old article, mm-hmm. but I was just like, oh, <laughs> April Fools. No, yeah. he's but I mean, no, he said he's yeah. leaving, yeah. But the weird thing is that Konami took his name off all the games on their website, that so instead of saying a Hideo Kojima game, it just said Metal Gear and said like a Konami game or something like that. Wow, they were like rebranding it, they even put out a press release, it was really weird. Well, his name's back on a bunch of the shit now on like, the website. I like I know we might not have time to get into like did he like do something to them or are they just butt hurt that he's like all right, I'm out. I think uh, I can't tell and because it's Japan where they don't like do this they don't yeah. say stuff, right? Yeah. Like Kojima's not the kind of guy to, you know, go give an interview and they be like, "Yeah, so fuck the so, so, <laughs> so my dick Konami. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Konami can take a big fat load. <laughs> I want to see him sitting there, like just just quietly talking, like he does in interviews, but then having a translator to translate it into like American reality. Oh, like a uh, freaking uh, like the situation is there, yeah. like translating for coaching. He needs an anger translator, like on Key and Peele. Oh like, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so his name is back on a bunch of things. That's cool. I'm glad that's happening. Um, I don't think. I think that even if he's leaving, I mean, right now I think the news is that at, he, he's still finishing five, but after that he's done. He's leaving the company uh, because I think that if he sticks around, he knows he stuck around before with the intention of not making a Metal Gear game, and he always he makes, makes a Metal, a Metal Gear, Gear game. game. I think the yeah. only way for him out is to leave he's Konami and go completely do some, something on yeah. his own, and I'm fine with that. Like yeah. I've said multiple times before, I think that after Metal Gear Solid Four, that was a fine wrap up to the series. Great. Didn't did, I saw something about him n- not on the s- new Silent Hills game? Also, uh, well, I think that because he's leaving, I mean, you know, the Konami's making Silent Hills. Oh, he's leaving Konami right. after five. That was what we talked about with Nick last week. I'm pretty okay. sure that he's leaving that game. And wow, I th- they haven't announced anything yet because they're so tight lipped and they've got really good information control. Like, you know, I yeah, I you just don't see as many leaks over there that aren't planned and um. Uh, so, but if you had to ask me, I'd be willing to bet that he's he's not that it, it's going to go forward as Guillermo del Toro lead, yeah. and then maybe somebody else from inter- inside of Konami is going right. to take over. Which doesn't mean it's going to be bad. It just it's kind of like featuring Norman Reedus. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just. I mean, at this point, they've invested. You know, with Guillermo del Toro yeah. and Norman Reedus, they can't back out of it, right? Right. But whether it'll be as good as what we saw in like the PT demo, yeah. 
I don't know. Who can say? Everybody wants to be Daryl. Also, by the way, they've been talking about making a Metal Gear movie for a long time. Forever. Apparently, they found a writer. C- who? Uh, Jay Basu from Monsters Dark Continent is penning the script for the Metal Gear movie. I, I don't, I don't think that a Metal Gear movie works. I honestly don't. Or, or if it works, I feel like. You've it got to, to a, change it. Yeah, you've got it to change com- it so much. A completely different mission, or or just something. It can't be in the timeline of the video games. It can't. It can't it follow can't. the game. It can't. It, I mean, you'd have to. Cut it has out. to be. It has to be Resident Evil, the movie series, because it does. That doesn't follow the timeline of the game. And they even said we just want to sprinkle some of those characters in here, right? Because it would make sense for them to be. And it did. I was like. I want, I'm I'm a fan of those movies, and so I knew from a very young age that video game movies weren't going to be the video game yep. as a movie. Look at Mortal Kombat. <laughs> well, um, it's I, I mean I think that um, no matter how good a video game movie is, I think all you have to do is look at like video games and modern television are both mediums that have a long time. Yeah. To develop characters to the point where, like, when TV is good, I mean, like, uh, okay, let me put it this way. Pick any season of Game of Thrones and put it up against any of the latest Lord of the Rings movies. Fuck those Lord of the Rings movies. I'd rather watch Game of Thrones. For real. Yeah. Like, I'd rather watch a season of Game of Thrones than a lot. I'd rather watch a Better Call Saul (laughs) is one of the most compelling pieces of television I've ever seen. That show is incredible. I'd rather watch it than any lighthearted you know drama that's yeah. out there as far as the yeah. movie goes and games are the same way i mean short games are six hours long right Correct. so you've yeah. got a lot more time to develop stuff i don't think that the stuff that they i mean metal gear uh, metal gear solid requires you to introduce solid snake and Merrill and liquid snake and the foxhound assholes origin story right. <laughs> but if it was a i mean you know if it was a a normal movie like i already feel like movies that have more than three bad guys in them it's too much they, they're messed yeah. up you know spider-man yeah. three uh batman begins i feel like had too many villains in it right you know yeah. there was like you get into this too many villains problem and fucking metal gear one or metal gear solid has a ton, ton of villains yeah and they're all like what are you gonna do take out Vulcan Raven? <laughs> no, dude, that guy's awesome. Yeah. Like, or Revolver Ocelot? You gotta, ro- you, just... you gotta roll the dice. If it lands on seven, we gotta go with this guy. If it lands on five, we gotta go with that guy. You know, I could see them <laughs> sitting around and going like, okay, well, Revolver Ocelot is uh, one of the least important characters here. Let's take him out. And then you go, well, Wait. if you follow the story, he becomes one of the most important characters. So that doesn't really work. It's after the credit scene, Jeff. Right. It's after the credit scene. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or a flashback or somehow there's a disruption in the time stream. Anyway, and he <laughs> I I don't I don't I honestly don't know if this is ever going to get made. It probably won't. It probably won't. You know, they're still talking about Assassin's Creed. I'm I, you know what? That they've been talking about an a, a live action Akira movie for Akira, 20 years. Assassin's Creed, yep. Devil May Cry. I remember when Brad Pitt was supposed to play Dante. Really? I don't remember and that. I'm, oh, I do. <laughs> and I was just like that's never going to happen. Yeah. And like games like that like and I'll say this, Devil May Cry could possibly happen now because of what Ninja Theory has done with the franchise. Of yeah. creating it new with the younger punk version they can do that they could go to Prague and film that i could see that happening i think you could i think you could film devil may cry just because like the action of devil may cry if you take if you remove all of that and the backtracking and stuff it's like you've got a bunch of set pieces you've got this really fantastic the guy who directed the fall could direct a devil may cry movie yeah it was kind of yeah or or, yeah (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) but yeah i i i don't know i but it's just they no, they found well, their writer. Good. You write a script. Yeah. We'll see what happens with that All in, the, was in the coming time. There was also <laughs> an announcement last week. That they're putting out Devil May Cry 4 remastered yeah. just briefly. I mean, great yeah. for everybody who's totally. And it's you can play as like Nero, Dante, uh, Lady, the, f- Trish, Trish, the lady from 3. Lady. Yeah. Lady. And uh, Virgil. Okay. So yeah. it's like five. Five. Yeah. That's weird to me because, yeah. I mean, I know people like Devil May Cry 4 a lot, but, like, 
I've never been able to get over the fact that that game is like a huge hallway that you walk down, and then when you get to the end of it, you turn, turn around, around and, and walk, walk backwards right back. to yeah. the beginning. And I'm yeah. like, it's interesting as a concept, but it ends up coming off to me as like very lazy. Like yeah. you just had to put something To out. me, some of the rooms are just like you go off into a room and just the room is way too small. Yeah. <laughs> or there was something in the middle of it. Um. Anyway, well, next up, apparently, on, you remember on live? Mm-hmm. They're closing. No, what? Yeah, <laughs> uh, Sony. Sony bought the tech from. Sony bought something. They licensed some of the tech from them, um, but they're closing up on April thirtieth. Uh, you know, uh, on live was a good idea. I'm glad that Sony's using the that Gaikai, the same kind of tech yeah. for their streaming on PlayStation now. Um, I don't think the OnLive was ever going to stand on their own two feet in the space that they were trying to get into. Yeah. So pour one out for OnLive. You know, <laughs> it's a good idea. Um, but the fact that the buttons on their controller spell out live is garbage. So. Okay, you got to uh, press the L button. The yep. no, 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 the E, the the V, the V button, the V button, the V button. <laughs> um, go backwards. <laughs> Evil. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And so, as always, we have to have at least one story every week. About something that somebody's looking forward to getting pushed back. Last yeah. week it was Batman. This week it is Quantum, Quantum Break. Break. <laughs> pushed back to 2016. At this point, is anybody really surprised? I mean, like I, I wasn't. I, I've been. I haven't been surprised by this shit since like 2013, right? Yeah, when they pushed was, everything back to 2014. I was, yeah, I was waiting. Um, and this, a remedy game that's been in development forever. <laughs> Do you guys not remember about Alan Wake and how that went down? How it took like 10 years to get Alan Wake out onto shelves? Um, anyway, I still want to play Quantum Break real bad. But yeah. Because um, that's an that's a, that's a Xbox One exclusive, right? Yep. Yeah, I'll be over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's, uh, plus, it's Remedy. And I've never played Alan Wake, but I love the shit out of Max Payne. Uh, Ooh. And last but generally, but specifically not least, uh, because of the culture that we live in in this particular day and age, Aaron, it's a news story that the Star Wars Battlefront trailer has a premiere date and time. So when you guys are, it, when it's April 17th and you're still celebrating my birthday the day before, at 10.30 a.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time, you can watch the first trailer for Star Wars Battlefront. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> at least it's not a teaser for a trailer. Right. That one that bugs was, me more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> where it's like, the trailer is coming up. Just show it to me, yeah. man. Like, come on. Uh, and with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to close up the news. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to answer your questions. we got a, a bunch yours. of questions. Not yours. 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 Not yours. The, that other guy. You, that guy. Yeah. Oh, you. Uh, and so we'll be back uh, momentarily. All right, and we're back. And, uh, folks, if you have a question to send in, send it to mail at rageslight.com. That's mail at rageslight.com. Before we get started, Aaron. Yeah. I think it's time Uh-oh. for me to start shaving my head. Oh boy! So I gotta, I gotta figure that out. But I'm, I, I want to get your. It's almost summertime, so. Well, uh, this is starting to get too ridiculous. <laughs> I got, I got, I got white guy balding going on. <laughs> time to just invest in the clippers and get to going. But I'm asking, I want to ask some opinions about this. Okay. Got to figure out what to do with my beard, right? Right. Like, um, just you know, unconnected, squared off, like where my glasses are, or like tapered up to a point. Uh, our friend Martin has this whole like pretend like it's tucked behind your ears like you're wearing a fake beard kind okay. of looking thing. Uh, okay, okay. Or do you do the horrifying thing of like just that free floating big beard, right? Like an actual beard, but, but like you, just you like cut it down and it's just like <laughs> just, it's like a big blob of hair <laughs> stuck to beard. your face. So um, because or I like to re- relate everything to the video game world, I okay. think you should go straight up Max Payne three. Okay. That's just like, like the square, like right? The square beard. Yeah. You know, but that always bothered me in Max Payne 3 because I'm like, you shaved your head because you were all pissed off, but you couldn't take a second to do your filthy nah, hobo face as nah, well. <laughs> but see, you're going to take care of the filthy hobo face because it's going to stay clean. Well, that's true. It's true. <laughs> it's going to stay clean. Maybe gonna, I just yeah. need to be Max Payne and you start drinking more, wearing more Hawaiian shirts, and shooting more people. Bam. All right. Well, there it is. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> figure that one out. All right. So let's figure out some people's problems. Now, this first one comes in from Origami. Zergling, and this is a huge yeah. email. So I'm going to compress a little bit of it here. Uh, I'm going to read the first 
a uh, couple paragraphs, and then I'm sorry, Oregon Missouri, I'm going to compress a little bit of what you say here. Uh, I'm a long-time listener and have drawn much enjoyment from your website, in particular the Dojo and the Podcast. Today yeah. I'm writing in regards to a personal experience that I went through in the last shift of this week at my current job as a lift operator at a family ski resort. All right. Oh. I'm going to take these next two paragraphs That's and basically condense movie. them. Okay. Uh, dude learned how to do origami, does origami, enjoys origami. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. Today at work, it was slow as the season is coming to a close and work is beginning to wind down as everyone prepares to make the transition back to summer employment. Thus, in my typical style, also, this dude just like writes like crazy. Yeah. Uh, Thus, in my typical style, I occupied myself by folding a chocolate wrapper into a Hercules beetle, a complex and challenging pattern that I've recently memorized. I succeeded in my craft and justifiably proud of my accomplishment went to show it to one of my coworkers, a young woman who I enjoy. Uh, to chat with on shared interests such as video games and horror movies. Yeah, you do. She responded to my creation by attempting to destroy it, Whoa. which I prevented. And when I asked her why she was so cruel to my paper minion, she replied, because it's pathetic. As I said, I am no stranger to barbs in the workplace, but the unexpected maliciousness and thoughtless cruelty of this response wounded me deeply and ruined what had otherwise bec uh, been a beautiful and happy day. It both baffled and stunned me. It was made all the worse by the fond associations I have to this person and the pride I take in my obscure little hobby. So my questions are as follows. Is my hobby really that pathetic when it is something I'm good at and brings me so much joy? Should I have known better than to show something silly that I was proud of? Should I allow this to affect the opinion I have of this person who up until this point had enjoyed the company of? Keeping in mind that her remark deeply offended me and baffled, uh, belittled something that I enjoyed. And can you possibly provide me with some comforting examples of similar cases in your own experiences from which I may draw some insight? Thank you for your time. All hail the mighty dog lord in his chrome temple, and blessed be his priest and powerful their erections. Sincerely, Origami Zergling. Whew. And I cut out two paragraphs yeah, there. So. I, see, I see that, yeah. Wow. Um, all right, well, first up, I mean, you know, if you like doing a thing, do it. Do it, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, fuck. I wish I could do origami. Yeah. I just don't have the time for it. Fuck a bunch of other, <laughs> fuck a bunch of other people and, yeah. like, their bullshit. Um, as far as this other person, I mean, like it kind of, I guess it kind of depends on your relationship to them, right? Like, yeah. um, if you hang out outside of the workplace, I mean, if that's the only thing that she's ever said to you that would like really like move you and like baffle you, I mean, it, you know, there's nothing that I, mean, it, I said, don't take it too harsh, like hard or harshly. Um, I, I've shown a lot of people stuff where it's just like, yo, check this out. Knock it over. Right. Like, why would you do that? Why yeah. not? Well, because, you know, everybody, people have dick tendencies, man. Right. <laughs> it's like they, they turn to a dick in a second. Yeah. And so, like, you can't really, like, hold that against you. But, like, yeah, if it's your hobby, you do it, man. Yeah. And, if like, if someone wants to, if she continuously tears you down, then there might be a problem. Could be a day that she was just going through some stuff. You don't know. Um, but it also, I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know the specifics, but it seems like a real dick move, yeah. right? Yeah, it's just like, a dick what, move. I mean, like, yeah. from an outsider's perspective, I'm like, hey, man, check this out. And your first thing is, like, slap it out of their hand and go, that's fucking stupid. Like, yeah. what? Uh huh? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'd say that if this is a, if this is just, like, a work acquaintance and, like, you, you know, I don't know, whatever, just be like, well, I guess she's kind of a bitch and then move yeah. on. Um, I mean, you know, if you have, like, an actual kind of not, you know the, not relationship relationship but if you have a relationship with her that you feel like you can go like hey w why did you do that yeah like i don't come down to where you work and slap the dick out of your <laughs> mouth yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> little, little jason murphy channeling for you there uh uh, but no, I mean, like, if it's a person that you know, you know, right? You could just be like, why? Why would you do yeah, that? Like, why, that's fucking yeah. crazy. Simple um, question. Or <laughs> there's actually a simple answer to it. But if they make it complicated, then yeah, there is something going on. Because honestly, I can say that, like, at least in my lifetime, it's like you pick the you pick the one. You pick the one, you pick the ace of spades, right? Yeah. Like any other person that you made, like some kind of crazy origami thing, we're like, hey, check this out. Like if you showed it to me, I'd be like, wow, that's cool. Yeah. Like what else can you make? I'd like, be like, what is that? Yeah. I'd be like, damn, man, can you make a <laughs> transformer? Can you make a <laughs> yeah, for real? Can I have this? I want this. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas just like uh, the, I can't imagine, I can't imagine somebody showing me anything in my first. Like, unless you came up, unless you just, like, came up with a handful of feces and you're like, look what I made. And yeah, like, ah, dude, oh. get away from me. Uh, even then, I wouldn't even want to slap it out of your hand. But, like, yeah. I mean, you know, if somebody was like, look what I drew, my first impression wouldn't be, 
that's fucking stupid. Why do you even yeah. do that? Like, yeah. that's a weird response to get from another person. Yeah, I wouldn't let it. I wouldn't let it bring you down, man. Because uh, I have a feeling that ninety nine percent of the other people that you were to show your hobby to would be like, rad, right. that's or cool. at least at the very least, like, huh. You know, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to yeah. responding with flat out like aggression and violence. That's pathetic. Yeah. Whoa. What a weird response. Whoa. Um, so let's, uh, let's roll down, make sure that I got these. Like, um, is my hobby that pathetic? No. no. Should I have known better than to show something silly that I was proud of? No. no. Uh, should I allow the this to affect the opinion I have of this person? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, and can you possibly provide me with some comforting examples of similar cases in your own experience, which I may draw some insight? Oh, go to art school <laughs> <laughs> when you're surrounded by talented uh, savants who can't do anything but are just drawing masters, and you're just like, you're like, oh man, I fucking I drew Bugs Bunny perfectly this time, and it's like, yeah, I drew Bugs Bunny riding a dinosaur punching Optimus Prime in the face, yeah. and it looks like. Uh, comic book art, and you're just like, oh, fuck you, man. Become a martial artist and actually train at a really good dojo. Yeah. Like, hey, look how long I can hold my kick. Okay, hold it higher. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I think that in I well, okay. So we talked we talked a lot about like uh, I think that any time any experience that I have that's like this is going to come from when you're in when you're in a um. How how best describe this? When you're doing something and you are on display in an area where other people are doing the same thing, you are much more likely to run up against criticism. Yeah. Yeah. The one that I can think of more than even art that's relatable, people watch me play video games all the time and they're just like, you're garbage. And I'm like, okay. "Okay." Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had to, it's taken me like years to get over just people being like, you are the worst. And I just now have to go. No, I'm not really that bad. I uh, <laughs> I um I've I've worked in the service industry, and um when I was learning how to make drinks, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. I worked with this one guy, Justin. He was the guy that if you wanted to learn how to be a bartender, the staff that I worked with, they're like, you got to work the happy hour with Justin. Mm-hmm. Justin, so you co- cocktail and shit, like, asshole. Okay, is the epitome <laughs> of an asshole. And that's why you love him because uh-huh. he is that he is that person in your life that if you need somebody to be blatantly honest, right, he will do it for you. And ninety um, percent of the time, you're like, cool. That other ten percent of the time is like, I'm fuck gonna off, kill man. you. Yeah, I'm gonna you. murder like, you. Calm. You didn't yeah. need to say that in front of these people right here. Right. One day I was just like, oh, Justin, I got the drink. Slap. <laughs> All right, make it again. <laughs> Why'd you just do that? He was like, "Wait, you're not a." He goes, "You're not a hot shot yet, man." Just keep, he's like, "You gotta keep making the drinks." I was like, "Son of a bitch!" It, it depends. <laughs> it depends because I feel like there's a lot of times there's a time that you need somebody to motivate you like that, right? But there is also, also a time where you need somebody to go. That's, that's awesome. You yeah. did a great job because if it's all that one and you don't have the stomach for it, you can. I mean, as we were talking before yeah. about getting good at something when you're shitty at it. If when you're shitty at it, you have nothing but people telling you how shitty you are, sometimes that'll motivate you to be, I will show you. you, Yeah, exactly. But sometimes you just go, okay, yeah, I am shitty, bye. Yeah. Done. So, uh, but yeah, dude, don't, don't, that's such a weird response. Uh, Don't take it to heart and don't feel bad about your hobby. And if it brings you joy, don't let anybody take that shit away from you. Keep making that origami. That's right. Uh, This next one comes in from B Hammer 100, who says, hello, Jeff and Aaron. Hope Don Cleese grants you the sticky knowledge to answer my question. Jeff, everybody who comes to Rage Select finds out pretty quickly that you like no love, Dark Souls. Uh, You don't talk about it very often. Ha! But when you do, you acknowledge your love for the series (laughs) that will kick your ass and not even take you out to dinner afterwards. My question, Jeff, do you think that there could ever be a Dark Souls movie and it actually be good? If you were put in charge of the movie, what would you do to make it the best movie it could be? Uh, would it be one long movie? Would it be like Lord of the Rings, several long movies? What would the story be? Thanks for answering my question. Be Hama 100. Um, P.S. By the time you read this, I may have finally gotten Dark Souls for the 360. I may not have had a chance to play it, but the time the podcast goes up, I will have. I'm excited to see how everything goes. Well, good luck, B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for <Yeesh>. sure. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's funny. We keep talking about this, and we've talked about it before. I honestly think that you could probably take something like Dark Souls with enough work, and especially with the success of something like Game of Thrones. Yeah. You could probably 
see, Dark Souls is hard because Dark Souls is about loneliness yeah. and the player being the last, like, kind of. I mean, there's a few other like side quest things in there, but a lot of it is kind of being the last sane man in an insane world kind of thing. Um, you could probably develop it into a series. You could probably develop it into a series where every week you picked a different area. You'd have to cut a few of the extraneous areas. Yeah. And there are probably enough stories that you could do it. The only problem is that you'd probably have to dramatically change the tone because you couldn't have a single protagonist. At, m at the least, you'd probably have to have a buddy cop road movie kind of thing with two people. Right. Just because watching... You know what? Did you watch uh, The Last Man on Earth? I did not. I okay. didn't see that. I didn't see that. The first episode of Last Man on Earth, he is by himself. He's literally the last man on Earth. And there's like a good 15 minutes of that that's just him dicking around by himself. It was incredibly boring. <laughs> and I think the people who want to know what a video game movie might be like without something like Uncharted, right, where there's yeah. other players, like what would a Skyrim movie be like? Well, you yeah. know, okay, well, you can even put stuff in there, but Dark Souls, like part of the whole game is experiencing this isolating feeling and i don't, just don't know if that would translate uh but I if mean, i had even to, will smith had a dog and i am legend yep i mean it's weird to have a protagonist that talks to themselves it's equally weird to have a protagonist that doesn't talk to anybody, anybody. um you could probably do it it would probably end up if you were going to make it successful it'd probably have to be like very avant-garde right right where you'd have to have somebody that really understands how to translate that loneliness and isolation combined with the action into a... You could probably do it. It would probably be weird, and people wouldn't like it Nicholas Winding Refn. What's that? The guy who did Valhalla Rising and Drive and um, yeah, uh, okay. Only I God Can, see can that. Judge Me. Okay, I Ryan, can see that. Ryan Reynolds does a good job of not talking to anybody. <laughs> That's not Ryan. Not Ryan Gosling. I'm Ryan sorry. Ryan Gosling. I was both, like, Ryan. Both white guys with five o'clock shadow. It's sorry. Like, but Ryan Reynolds does a really <laughs> poor job of not, <laughs> not talking. talking. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Ryan, Ryan Gosling. He's the worst Ryan at not Gosling. talking. He By has way, like six lines in that whole freaking, all of his movies combined. Yeah. That I mean, he's been and, with. But yeah. The thing about Dark Souls is that there are these like, these people that you meet throughout the world and so you could kind of do it. I mean, and I think about it, you could maybe do it, or if you had your character as the main protagonist, it'd probably be very difficult in the very beginning because there's not a lot in the very beginning. But there are plenty of areas where you will find an NPC that then like goes back to the, your, your home base, mm -hmm. and you could talk to a bunch of times. You could probably have them travel with the main character for a while to give them a chance to, uh, telling their stories and dialogue. Because there are a bunch of reoccurring characters. Would you, would you do... The deaths, like Groundhog Day? I probably wouldn't have the the main character die. M maybe, the, the okay, uh, from a story perspective, without cheating, the main character has to die. You know, I, I know. I would have them die at the end of every episode. <laughs> That's cool. So every... And so that at the beginning every, of every, every episode, episode, like maybe even tie it into the... Into the title where the where the beginning of the episode is them like kind of coming up from the fire, right? And then now that I think about it, you've got the whole summoning across worlds thing. So you yeah. could actually take characters where there are no characters and bring them into the world to give your main character a foil for like an episode. Right? No, you could totally do that. You could totally make Dark Souls into a TV series, and it would just it would take a million, billion, it's zillion dollars problems. to get all the different areas that you would and need. And wouldn't be able to do, be done in America. So probably so, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Game of Thrones. Is an American production, mm. but ninety nine point five percent of their cast <laughs> is not American. You would you would <laughs> probably have to go to Europe for Dark Souls just to get oh, yeah. enough castles and towns oh, yeah. and stuff and shit. Right? We yeah. just don't have we, that shit here. No, we uh, got churches, man. What but yeah, <laughs> I would and I would totally watch that America. series. It would it would tank. Nobody would understand what the fuck they were watching or would be interested yeah, in. Yeah, because uh, again, it's one. It's the thing that I talk about constantly about the fact that when you take the interactivity out of a video game, you've lost a part, part of that yeah, game. Yeah, fifty percent of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and in Dark Souls, maybe even more than that, because part of Dark Souls is the dying and the playing and the overcoming adversity is yeah. part of what it is. Um, all right. Thank you for asking Jeff to direct it, not you, Bowl. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay uh, our next question comes in from Sean. Sean says, is there a band or musical artist that you feel is incorrectly or unfairly roped in with a particular genre, subgenre, or general group, thereby changing how this artist is viewed? It often seems to me that System of a Down is incorrectly roped in with the new metal music from the late 90s and early 2000s, like Korn and Linkin Park, for example. Or wait, let's say... Like Corn and Linkin Park, for example, and this negatively affects how people view the band. With many people thinking of them as that band that I loved listening to in high school in a generally dismissive way, whereas to me, System of a Down are far more on the lines of someone like Tool with creative, complex, and layered songs covering a wide and varied spectrum of topics. Sean, I don't know about this one. Do you have a? Were you just holding handlebars? I did, I did, I was I was being I was bracing myself to see where he was going to go with this because System of the Down yeah. is the um, band that's been charged with doing the music for Mortal Kombat X. Oh really? Yeah. And so I'm like, what are you saying about System of the Down? <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I think you know it's funny. Well, who is the? Um, um, I think that a lot of times bands like that are really good uh, for soundtracks. Yes. Right. Like I, I love the fact that uh, I feel that uh, Fight Club wouldn't have been nearly what it was without the Dust Brothers soundtrack. Yeah. Even though in the time when they were doing that, there were so many better electronic music. Like if you were just going to go listen to electronic yeah. music or trip hop or something, there were so many better bands out there. But they did a fantastic job. Well, it was awesome. Soundtrack. With like speaking of like uh, groups like that, um, with um, Hana, the movie that mm -hmm. came out with yeah. Cerise Ronan, Chemical Brothers did the entire. Um, score right, and I was just like, Whoa. "Yeah, that's like it was so good." Like I it was like, I love the movie, but when you leave a movie and you're like, "I want to listen to that soundtrack," that just that's a testament of how well that music moved mm -hmm. through that movie. Um, and so like th there are other movies that are like that. Um, because I think um one I'm really looking forward to uh Junkie XL. Okay. Did the um did the soundtrack and the score for Mad Max Fury Road? Oh, that new trailer was. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was like, <laughs> what is yeah. going on here? Supposedly, there is only one or two scenes in that entire movie that use CG. Really? And we've already seen them, according to the trailers. God That's damn. what they said. We've already seen it. I'm like, oh. and I know one of them is that giant storm, uh -huh. but it's still like. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm so far behind on my movie trails. I haven't oh, seen the Spectre one it's yet. It's blockbuster. This is this is this is when the action movies like fuck Oscar season. <laughs> I give a shit about. I'm sorry, American Sniper. Good for you. Twelve Years a Slave. Um, Selma. Awesome. This is my shit. One of right these here. things is not like the other, Eric. Well, they're <laughs> all Oscar Oscar like generated sure. buzz and stuff like that. Furious Seven, Mad Max. Let the Let's get it. This is this is my shit right here. But um, Avengers two, Avengers yes. Like I can't believe that Avengers two is like what a month away or something like. I that, know right? it feels like oh, it's never coming out. Right, <laughs> they're never gonna make that. Yep, yep, yeah. Um, anyway, yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, tangent. Yeah, sorry. But uh, um, but no, but yeah. I don't, genre subgenre. I still listen of, to Linkin Park because yeah. they're still making music that I enjoy, and okay. so it. I've never. I'll I'll say a uh, a band that I listened to in high school. Hooba stank. Okay. Crawling in the dark. That that's what I associate them with. But if they, if I'm sure they're still creating music. If they're not creating music, I know a lot of the people in bands become producers and stuff like that, and still yeah. put their essence in music that they produce. Mm -hmm. But I would system of the down. I'm like, you know, I, I I'm this this is just me personally. My frame of like training and martial arts. I still listen to their music, man. It was like that's not music, like. You know, chop suey. That's on my top list of things to hit a punching bag to. Right. That's like that's not just a song. Like, oh man, I remember that song in high school. But like, yeah, when I play my music and I'm training with other people, mm. they're like, "Whoa, man, blast from the past." I haven't heard this song in a while. And I'm like, I listened to it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, but I understand where he's coming from because yeah, like there are those bands that you know, you you link to different areas of your life i've just been that guy that's like held on to that music because it's always i guess it's always served a purpose sure and so um with like i, I don't know if that answers what he's saying but 
Yeah, I I'm trying to think. I mean, I've I don't listen. I don't. I mean, I've. It's so weird. I mean, I used to be. I spent hundreds of dollars every week on CDs. Now. I'm more about listening to podcasts. Yeah, uh, I'm like, what? It's like I, I get an email notification, new music on Spotify. I'm like, yeah. what, what, what we got? <laughs> uh, but I think that the only thing that I can think of is that I remember very early on, um, I've always been a fan of They Might Be Giants uh, mm-hmm. for a long, long time. And I remember, I don't, know, I don't know where you would even classify them, but I know that they used to classify them as college rock, right? So they would be lumped in with like the Dead Milkmen and okay. like Pavement and people that had kind of weird niche um, uh, kind of gimmicky songs, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, or or uh, the, the, the Something band you see in a Detachable Penis. Like uh, a <laughs> those guys, you know. Uh, AT&T commercial. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're not. I mean, they've got all kinds of music mm-hmm. that's all over the place and I don't even know what you would I don't know what you would even classify those guys as right. because their songs have a flavor but it's almost like they're their own genre uh, because they're not in t- I mean they've got songs that are more like rock and roll and they've got songs that are more electronic they got songs that sound more like their early stuff but they've just never been afraid to just bring in whatever and fucking yeah. do whatever and some songs are real weird slow paced and some mm-hmm. are real zippy like the, and yeah. some are fast and some are long and yeah so they're probably the one that I would see mischaracterized but I don't have an answer as to what I would even characterize them as. Yeah. Like, what the fuck genre is they? <laughs> uh, all right. This next one comes in from Detective FDRRR. Oh, FDR. Who says, hey, guys, Detective FDRRR here. Uh, so, Jeff, with your advice, I went back and gave Dark Souls. Oh, it's another Dark Souls question. I, yep. <laughs> sorry, I think he's out yesterday. I uh, gave Dark Souls another shot, and at a whopping 73 hours, 55 minutes, and 40 seconds, I finally beat it. Never have I felt more accomplished for beating a game. Congratulations. Uh, which brings me to my question. Has there ever been a moment where you did something that was outside your comfort zone, but it gave you a huge sense of accomplishment after doing it? Uh, thank you for making such an awesome site and keep it classy. Detective FDR. Uh, Aaron? Do you ballet. Play? Ballet. Really? Yep. Okay. Took ballet. Um... I guess just because I was I I was just a good mover. Yeah. <laughs> it's I I associate I I just associate. You just wanted to follow in Jean Claude Van Damme's footsteps, right? Sure. I mean, yeah. Is he the Not one who took quite, the, But he did. He's he did a dick take, professional he, dancer or yeah, whatever. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> oh, he yeah he did a lot of stuff. <laughs> but um but no like yeah I was um like you know I used to teach hip hop I used to take hip hop of of. I started out like break dancing, gymnastics, martial arts, all of all of that stuff. I never did ballet yeah. until like I was like out of college, mm-hmm. and then like I was out of college. I took ballet at this one dance studio because I was there junior high and high school hip hop teacher. Okay, and so the the she was just like, hey, you can take ballet just for free, class, yeah. for free. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, all right, cool. And I was just like, hey, it's not bad. Yeah. It's helping out my flexibility. This is cool. All right, no, it's good. <laughs> this is weird. But it's like weird because it was, th- not going to lie, it was like a bunch of little junior high and high school white girls. Right. And then you got a six foot black man <laughs> standing in the corner in tights and is like, leap across the floor. Leap, leap, go, ladies, go. Aaron, leap, <laughs> leap. I'm like, I'm jumping. She's like, no, <laughs> leap. And so, like, she, like, took it seriously. She was like, stay after class. I'm going to help you work on your leaps, get you, like, even more stretches that I had to do. Yeah. And then one day she was like, you're massively improving. I want you to be in this show. And, like, she's, like, started, do- like, producing all of these shows. And so, like, I got to be in some pretty – awesome dance shows that are now on my resume yeah. that when people see it, they're just like, oh. And so I'm like, yeah, 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 I took, yeah, I took ballet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I looked like a complete fool for a few months, but I did it. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's one of the main things. That's an excellent answer. I wish yeah. I had something. Like that. something that I could, I'm like, you're listening to it right <laughs> now. hey The first time that they were like, be on a podcast. I'm like, nobody wants to listen to that. <laughs> nobody wants to hear any of these things. And I don't know why I said it like a British person. <laughs> uh, I can actually say that probably the um, – so here's the thing. I am super, super self-conscious about standing up in front of people and doing stuff. Word. Uh, and it means that I do not – and, and it, you've got to kind of know the people that, uh, I, that we associate with. They are karaoke 
fiends. Right. Like, there oh. are a lot of them out yeah. there that love karaoke, and they're always just like, get up there, sing, we won't judge you. And I'm like, yeah, you say yeah, that, but I know you're li- actually judging you're me. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so last year, over at one of us, they had a little local meetup thing, and they were doing karaoke at this bar, and I was like really drunk. Um, and they were like, get up there, Jeff, get up there. And I was like, oh, I don't sing. And they're like, get up there. And there's people from out of town. They're like, all right. I'm like, okay, all right. Um, get the uh, I'm Bane rap out. And I was, and they were like, uh, uh, Chris Cox from over there, he was running the thing. He's like, I can't, because they were just doing YouTube karaoke. Yeah. Right? He's like, I can't find a karaoke version. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, it's just it's bring up the video, video. <laughs> skip to that part. I know all the words. Fuck it. So I got up on stage and like reached down in the audience and grabbed this dude's sunglasses and put them on. Wrapped the entirety of I'm Bane from start to finish, like six sheets to the wind. Took the guy's glasses, gave back to him, and and everybody clapped super hard. And I was just like, "Okay, good. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome." It wasn't one of those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, like, I would rather somebody run up on stage and punch me in the face than <laughs> than do that and then get that response right. from. Yeah, me. I'd rather just be yeah. like, "Yep." Um, but that was something that's way outside of my comfort zone. There's, if you get me really drunk, I will try to sing karaoke, usually songs that I'm not I, supposed to be singing, <laughs> and I'll sing them real bad. But um, that was the only time that I've ever done it, and people actually liked it. And yeah, so. It was a positive reception. Yep. Yeah. All right, this next one comes in from Joseph, and this is actually a question for Jason, or he says for Jason and Jeff, but I think it's a good question. So okay. we'll read it anyway. Yeah. He says, uh, Dear guys, I was hoping to get some advice uh, from you guys regarding, in regards to gaining a better command and understanding of the h- English language. I almost said human language. Yeah. <laughs> the human language. Yeah, human uh, language. I am currently a grad student at Ohio State University pursuing a Master of Fine Arts degree in digital animation interactive media. As per the master's degree requirements, I am to write a thesis at the end of my time here that is accepted by the faculty as a contribution to the world of design and digital animation. I won't bore you with what I've chosen to write about, but I will say it involves science fiction, 3D animation, and cyborgs. Rad. Word. Uh, The problem I'm facing is all my professors recommend these texts to me to help guide my thesis writing, and for the most part, what they recommend is dense, boring, and at times frustrating, as the writers use a language that I feel only people with PhDs in literary theory could understand. Um, Both of you seem to have a great understanding of the English language, and I hear you two regularly spat out phrases and terms that are beyond my comprehension. (laughs) So long story short, what are things I can do to help me better understand these writings my professors are giving me? I've done everything from taking notes on passages I don't understand to looking up words I don't recognize in the dictionary, but it doesn't make the language any more clear or coherent to me. Um, Any advice you can offer would be extremely appreciated. Your loyal fan, Joseph. Full disclosure, I do have ADD, and I do have trouble retaining information and focusing on anything for more than a few minutes at a time. Uh, I have medication, but it doesn't seem to quell my condition. That's a tough one. I mean, uh, I can recommend some stuff, but the ADD is going to be kind of hard to to get over. Um, What I can say... um, What I can say for comprehension is using the language that you're that you're not certain of right um i mean i can say that that um definitely reading things like if you can find i guess if you can find fiction that is as yeah. dense as what you're reading and read that then you're probably going to get because a lot of times when it comes to to text that's that dry and boring it, it's. I mean, it's hard for me to read that yeah, shit. Yeah, it's gonna right? go flatline because yeah. you just you're very you're not engaged. Yeah. Uh, because the person. It's why you see so many books where people will be right. Like here's how to. Uh, here's here's uh, uh, how to write a screenplay, but it's a book that's got anecdotes and it's like you know yeah. it's it's got personal stories and little funny bits in it to keep your brain working because yeah. it's just like then turn it becomes like that Ben Stein scene in oh, Ferris Bueller's yeah. Day Off, so right? Today this is what we're gonna do, right? Um, yep. <laughs> which will which will put you yeah. to sleep so <laughs> fast. Yeah. Uh, but as far as comprehension of language, I mean, I'd say. If, you know, look for recommendations, especially if you're in school. Maybe head on over to the English department and be like, "Hey, I can need- you give me some uh, some some books that are very that are fiction but are very dense?" Um, I think that for me, a lot of it is just the fact, and I know that this isn't a help to him. For my money, 
my dad's a major masters of English. Right. And he talks like a masters of English. And so he does not shy away from using big words and then just expecting you to keep the fuck up with him. <laughs> <laughs> so as a kid, you'd keep the fuck up with him. Um, I think that, though, um, if you could find people that 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 speak that way or you could find other examples of things that are not boring textbooks that have that same level of complexity to them that will engage you, that'll help you quite a bit. Definitely. And I say continue to keep looking up the words that you don't understand, even though you're saying that's not helping you understand the phrases, still continue to look up those words because down the line, those words you look up and like phrases are going to start piecing themselves together. And that's a natural thing that happens. And above all, like the English language, like American English is the hardest language to actually learn. Yep. And I, I'm going to say comprehend because I took Chinese Mandarin specifically for three years in college. Mm -hmm. And I still, I, after the third year, I was fluent. I had people I could talk to. I could write sentences. I could read the books. Yeah. After there was a point where I didn't have that available to me anymore, mm -hmm. completely lost it. But I still retained some to where I ran into people. They're like, oh, so like, what, what did you take? Like random questions of like, what did you take for your foreign language in college? I'm right. like, oh, Mandarin Chinese. Oh, like then they start trying to talk like just sput out stuff i'm like uh i understood how are you yeah like you know i go i revert back to the basics because that's what was drilled so much and so i for me with like phrases and stuff like that i'm like find something that you know look at, like i i'm i'm like a youtube advocate because like there's so many things i actually have learned on youtube go to youtube and search you know common English phrases. Well, that's, another, just, I mean, that's another thing. Is I mean, if you don't understand a word, I think that you're also in a position that's way better oh, than, yeah. than you used to be where you can... I've never tried this before, but if you don't immediately comprehend a thing, you can always go to Google and maybe type it in and see if you can yeah. get... Because so many times the dictionary examples don't suck. They're terrible. <laughs> so if you could find places where those words are, where they're used in a more naturalistic setting... Um, there's always that. And if you want to have some really, really stupid fun, go to Urban Dictionary. <laughs> You'll find some phrases on that bad boy that you <laughs> might not want to say, but it's good to have in your back pocket when someone tries to insult you. Uh, the nuclear option. Urban yeah, Dictionary. Yeah, urban Dictionary. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I, I Honestly, I wouldn't like, I, you know, the fact that my dad was Masters of English and that we were expected to do that. That's, I mean, otherwise, I don't, I probably wouldn't have the same vocabulary. Yeah. I have. And I know people that are smarter, more talented, and, and, you know, more experienced than I am, and I'll be talking to them, and I'll use a word, and they'll be like, what does that word mean? And I'm yeah. just like, oh, it means that I mean, it's like, you know. It, I n my girlfriend, she uses the phrase old hat, that, yeah. that phrase old hat. Sure. I never knew what that what the hell that meant. And she's like, you've never heard that before? I'm like, no. Yeah. And then as soon as she started saying it, I was like, I try to incorporate that more and more. If something, I was like, yeah, that's just old hat to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used it correctly. That's right. I like, uh, I like I like hat trick personally. Nice. It's such a weird. Do you, do you know that one? Oh, I just know the term in hockey. Oh, okay. But it's probably completely different. No, I, I mean it's probably the same thing. I don't know what it is in hockey, but it's just the same person makes three goals. All it means is the same thing happens three times. There, That's a hat yeah. trick. Nice. You know, yeah. it's like what a weird thing. <laughs> uh, um. So yeah, I hope that I hope that helps. I'm sorry. I mean, I think that you know, you maybe ask your professors if there's a better if there's a better text that they can recommend, or maybe go to the internet yeah. and see if the internet can recommend a better text for how to write your thesis that's written in a little bit easier way to understand. I mean, I'm sure you're not the first person who has read some fucking dusty, obscure bullshit of some tenure yeah. professor writing an asshole <laughs> treatise <laughs> on writing your thesis. <laughs> Uh, and you're just like, oh, fuck you, fuck you. But yeah, and if you know, if if the Rage Select podcast and all those other videos are helping you, keep looking at those, man. You'll find some gems in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Sexo comes in from our friend VJ, who says, "Hello, priests of the dong." Uh, the discussion about what the fuck did Mauritian shin is shin. Okay, it's I'm learning. 
This person right. from Mauritian. Okay. Uh, that's written in like four or five times, right? Okay. Uh, and last time somebody chided me about not knowing where Mauritian is. It's an island off the coast of Africa. Oh. Um, and I was like, and somebody was like, Jeff, I can't believe you don't know that. I was like, why, why? would I know yeah. that? Um, so the discussion about what the fuck did Mauritian do to deserve recognition was hilarious. It's a popular holiday destination for Europeans, so I don't expect you guys to know about it since it's far away from the U.S. My question this week is, with the upcoming release of Final Fantasy XV, what would you like to see in the next game? I'm assuming that's, assuming that's the next Final Fantasy game. 16? Yeah. I'm tired of trilogies, serious-looking protagonists with crazy hair, and streamlined combat where you only control one character. Personally, I would love a throwback to 6 and 9, my favorites, with whimsical, fantastical protagonists, turn-based combat, and characters with unique abilities who don't become interchangeable once you fill up their sphere-slash-grid system. Thanks for answering my question, and may the good word of the Dong Lord reach Mozambique, St. Dennis, and Mauritania? I don't... Okay. VJ. Um, I think he's just making some shit up on some of that. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking, VJ. Don't hate me. Uh, <laughs> you know, have you? Did you play the 15 demo? I actually just started it the other day, but I was too tired and I fell asleep. It's so weird. Yeah. Like the only like after watching it, the best way that I could describe it was if Final Fantasy was our medieval past, this game yeah. would oh, be yeah, what we things had, are yeah. like in the present, right? Yeah. Because uh, it's like cars and diners and plastic chairs, but there's also gargantuan <laughs> summon Odin. He takes up the entire screen. Yeah. Um, what would I like to see? I would kind of. I don't know. That's hard. I mean, like in all honesty, I feel like that. Um, I feel like Square keeps trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And they've been trying to kind of do the next big thing, and it might be time for them to go back and do another nine, where they go, because like. Persona 4, right? The combat Persona 4 is turns, right? Yeah. You go, enemies go, you go, enemies go. But they've used, or Bravely Default is like that. Uh, So is, well, Fire Emblem's tactical, but Bravely Default, uh, Persona, you know, there's plenty of games out there that do that turn-based JRPG combat. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's, and the companies that know how to do it well, like Square Enix, like I feel like they could really churn out something really good in that yeah, regard. Yeah, because thirteen was turn based. It was active turn based yeah. with lightning. Yeah, yeah, sort of. I mean, I'm talking. I mean, I'm thinking just like you stop. stop. Yeah, right? you know, sit there at a menu. I actually attack, like. Attack, attack, I actually attack. like that. That's yeah. that's seven. Like this, I just refer that to Final Fantasy seven. Like you, you like that's like. There's also, and I I've brought this this um this game up. A long time, but it's the um, Wild Arms saga. Okay, there's um, I. Yeah, people they love up, it when you talk about Wild I, Arms. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to me, it they took that turn-based menu pop up. Here's your combat. There were the first. I, it wasn't the first Wild Arms. I think it was Wild Arms too, where they put it in like a Western setting and stuff like that. Sure, I and thought they were all in a Western setting um, personally, but some of I don't think. The last couple of one. anyway, I don't know. Um, but um, just the, what I remember playing, there's a Western setting, and like you could do all these different things with your guns and everything like that. And it was just like, here's the here's the enemy, your turn, their turn, your turn, their turn. But then they went to like the hexagon battlefield, yeah. So it became more tactical because then they were like, in this hex- hexagon, double the damage, and hit this hexagon, okay. You'll receive double the damage if they hit you, or and so is all this stuff, and you can't attack somebody over. And I was just like, too complicated. Why didn't you just go back to yeah, like the other one? Um, but in comparison, there's another. It was Shadow Hearts. Okay, that one I loved just mainly because it was an M-rated, mm. um, RPG. But it was that, here's the bad guy, here's you, here's all the things. Like, when it's your turn, you have so many options of what you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, you can transform this character, or you can transform this character, or you can do this. And that gives you even more options, and still it's in that turn-based thing. And so, it's like you said, like, with these companies who, who can do that, well why and and i guess this is a question that i have why would they want to try to reinvent themselves when people are like i miss the turn base like you guys did it so well i mean i think they're i think they're just trapped right they're trapped in that whole thing where if they do turn base and everybody goes fucking i'm so tired of this and if they do crazy stuff then the other 50 percent of people are like like, where's the turn base so there's i mean you know there's literally just no pleasing anyone i had an idea actually while you were talking 
of I'd like to see them do your turn turn combat, but you know, in Final Fantasy, it's always been three to four people, but then a lot of times you have a party that has like eight, eight to 12, 12 people, people in it. Yeah. Why not line up 12 people on one side and like a shitload of enemies on the other and take that turn based thing and start it small, but keep making it go more and more and then give a game where you actually have control over a party that where I mean you can already kind of see where like depending on who's standing next to somebody else that they yeah. get different types of bonuses and then like you know you, maybe the attacking goes towards a specific like quadrant as opposed to or maybe like you've got 12 people but then you're getting attacked from two sides yeah. from uh, you know more often than you are it's in Final Fantasy. It's funny you say that um, my, my mobile game Blood Brothers mm -hmm. like there's Blood Brothers and there's Blood Brothers 2 now like you, like in Blood Brothers, you have specific characters. This is a card game. You right. have these specific characters, but when it's like a raid boss yeah. that you're fighting, so you have this gigantic boss on the screen, gigantic on your cell phone. Um, on my cell phone, it's gigantic. But <laughs> yeah, this gigantic boss, and then however many people you have in your set. So if you have regularly a line of four, right, you then have eight. Okay. So if you're not paying attention, you could have four souped up characters and then four shitty characters backing up those characters, and you're like, I'm about to get trashed. Mm. Because if they, like, the raid boss, it hits everybody. Right. So it's like, boom, that back line is out. Right. And then you're like, crap. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm like, that, yes. Because, like, when I'm playing that one, it's just like, oh, this guy's fucked now. Yeah. Like, because I got my whole, I have literally my whole squad in. Right. And I've made sure that. I like these people. I like these people. This person can back up this person. Oh, I can level this person up when this person gets full level. Just switch them out. Mm -hmm. And so I, I am completely down with that game or style. Like you were just saying, that would work too. Yeah, D two tiers, right? Yeah, like set a set your set, go back to your old school. And if you wanted to like make the make the tactics different, where you've got to put like heavies in the front, and then you've got to protect like archers and magic users and yeah. things in the back row, but then give yourself certain types of bonuses depending on people that are next to each other. Hell, I think one of the greatest things in Persona and even in Fire Emblem was the relationships between the characters yeah. that were dynamic, where you could make this character have a relationship with this character. In fact, now that I think about it, I think that what I'd like to see Square do is pull back from, their, from the cinematic experience a little bit so that they can have more diverse options because they spend so much time mm -hmm. doing these cinematics and doing this characterization that locks you into a story that can only go in one, one direction. Way, yeah. Whereas I'm playing Pillars of Eternity right now, and that's a real lo-fi game, like super low res, like very simple backgrounds, the kind of game that I think they kickstarted like 150K or I don't, actually I should probably look that up, but uh, they kickstarted a relatively small amount of money compared to what, you know, Square sure, puts yeah. in for their stuff. Um, and they, uh, but what you end up with is a game that's much more basic, but has so much more, um, uh, so many different ways to do everything because you don't have to record voice exactly acting for everything. Thing. You just have text on the screen, um, or you just like when you click on them, it's like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and anyone in the company can do that. Well, it's <laughs> it's it's the I mean it's the thing where let's see, uh, does it say how much they did? Nope. Okay. Um, I wonder how much they made. Let's see. They, oh, never mind. Uh, they got $3 million. They almost got $4 million for that. But so, yeah, yeah, never mind. Uh, I mean, that's not still not as much yeah. as the budget of a Final Fantasy game, but yeah. that's not chump change. Um, but I would like to see Square, like, I like the idea that in something like the 3DS games like Fire Emblem, mm -hmm. you can write dialogue for the relationship between any one of those characters, and it's got to be like a paragraph here and a paragraph there and a paragraph there, but it costs so much less to hire an army of writers to write you like dialogue for everybody and then use the simple sprites in your old Final Fantasy way to tell whatever the fuck story right. you want. Yeah. Oh, dude, that would be great, is if they went back and they used like 16-bit sprites instead of their old stuff, but then make a Final Fantasy game that has like 65 different endings and a bunch of different branching plot lines Man. to the point where they're not using their resources to make a super good-looking game. They're using it to make Final Fantasy 1, except that every time you make a decision, you've now branched into a different plot line. Yeah. That would be rad. Yeah. I would totally play that. <laughs> play the shit out of that. <laughs>
Uh, and then put in the four pick. Did we sh- I want to make that game now. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. All right. Uh, this next one comes in from Stephen Cluck, who says, uh, Dear Jeff and Aaron, I'm currently in college. I will be graduating in June and now have to think about what comes next. The thing is, I know what I want to do, just no clue how to go about doing it. I want to do more or less what you do, either creating game gaming videos or possibly scripted content on the Internet. And in fact, have been recording gaming videos purely as a hobby even longer than you guys have, sans quality. I wonder what that means. Okay. Uh, so my question is, do you have any advice on how to get my foot in the door at existing internet-based production companies? Uh, if you were in the position to hire people, what would I have to do to catch your attention as a prospective employee? I guess this is the part where people usually say something about Don Cleese, so praise be to him. Must be his length. Sincerely, Stephen Cluck. Um, I think you're going to be able to answer this question better than I can because I stepped in it, right? I was an animator over at Spill, and then they brought me on to video games. And I don't think, I mean, I don't think Rage Select would exist, one, without the association with Spill, right. two, without Jason Murphy to start with because, mm-hmm. like, you know, the people love that dude. Yeah. Um, so I am probably not the best person to answer that question, but can you speak to, I mean, you know, you do a lot of stuff, Aaron, right? I mean, like, are these trade secrets? Are you giving away your... Uh, I'm just trying to, like, just, okay, Let's read the question one more time. Let's see it. So my question is, do you have any advice on how to get how to get my foot in the door at existing internet-based production companies? Uh, if you were in a position to hire people, what would I have to do to catch your attention as a prospective employee? I mean, honestly, I guess, you know, it's going to be kind of about your reputation and your, your y- demo reel, right? Yeah. Kind of your content. I, I'll, I'll say this, because it's gotten to a point now where friends ask me if... I know of any films that they can like be a part of, or if I know of anything that they can like um, be crew members for or right. stuff like that. And um, that makes me feel good because that lets me know that I'm, I've as- quote unquote established myself enough to have so much going on to where someone, I I could hear someone say, Oh man, I need a PA for this, or I need someone who's good with lighting, or I need, and I know people who like I know several people who I could just be like, okay, yo, check this out. But also, I know people who are like, they're a douche. I'm not gonna let them know about this job. Right. So it does come down to like your, like, who you are, your personality, but most importantly, for me, with everything that I'm doing. Yes, I owe a lot of people thanks for getting helping me get my foot in the door, but before I knew those people, I was I can't say hustling is the right word cuz hustling also has like you're kind of like pulling the shade over people's eyes. Right. Um um and I don't want to use the word grinding because it's very um I don't know. I was working really freaking hard yeah i was like i was throwing myself anywhere everywhere not afraid to fail because you were hungry i was extremely and i and that's the thing i'm still hungry that's why i'm still doing so much more but you have to be able you have to know what you want to do what you're willing to do and how long you're willing to do it Mm -hmm. before you've you feel that you've got enough experience to then go to the next level Mm -hmm. or go to the next tier or present yourself to a company or present yourself to a person sure whatever it is because with me in the acting world i had to do a lot a lot of unpaid shit Mm -hmm. to put on my resume so i could show people i've done stuff even if they didn't hear it a lot of and 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 this is the thing that I've learned. It's not what you've done; it's how much you've done. Mm-hmm. And if there are some things in there that people actually know about, and you could be like, and you can show them, yeah, then that's like that's gonna like really go a really long way. Because I remember the only reason why I'm here is actually because of Jason Murphy, because he's the one that asked me, Hey man, you want to come over and record this video? Yeah. We came over and it was bound by flame. Yep. 
And this is the thing. Jason Murphy only wanted me to come over because it was called the dojo and I was a martial artist. So he thought that it would be really cool for me to be a part of this little segment. And also, I play video games. You're right. What made it stick <laughs> with Jeff <laughs> is that I actually played the game. Yeah. And that I actually knew what I was talking about. Well, you got to <laughs> remember at that particular time, it's like, you know, Jason was starting to burn out and he would never yeah. play something that small anyway. Grant doesn't have time to play games. It was the, kind of right around the time when I still had John working early access. And I come over, like, yeah, we're playing this game. You're like, yeah, I know yeah, what that is. Yeah. I'm like, well, what, what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody who knows. <laughs> yeah, because I had just bought bought it the other day. And I was like, oh, I'm, already, I'm already playing it. And yeah. so it was one of those things, like, you know, have passion in what you want to do. And that's the other thing. You got to have an, ex like, you have to have a beeline on what you want to do. Because if you're still not sure of what you actually want to do, then that's when you need to start honing your own skills and, and the stuff that you feel confident in. Because then once you hone that stuff and you get in front of somebody and you actually know what you're talking about and you're not full of shit and you're not trying to pull stuff out of your ass and be like, yeah, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, like people who do this shit for a living will know when you don't know what you're talking about. Yep. And there's nothing like having someone look you straight in the eyes and you know that they know <laughs> that you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I've actually been there and I'm just like, shit. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that because now I'm going to have to go home and do some research because if they do ever talk to me again, I better come correct. Yeah. But, but also at the same time, don't put yourself in that position. Like if you know what you and if you don't know it. Tell them you don't know it because then that'll open up a chain of dialogue. I think that's always a better option. Yeah. I think that's yeah. almost always a better yeah. option. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. because, you know, if somebody says, like, hey, what do you know? Like, uh, let, put it this way. Let me, let me put this in. Uh, let, let's create a <laughs> scenario <laughs> here where let's say that, like, let's say somebody came and they wanted to work for Rage Slight and I and I were talking and I'm just like, um, so, I mean, you know, we talk about it a lot on the show. Are you a fan of the Soul series? And they're not. And they're like, oh, yeah, I love those games. But like, really? Um, cool. Like, uh, which one did you like the best? Just that simple question could fuck them yeah. up. You completely fuck them up and let's say that they know a little bit they're just like oh yeah well there was that one part with the dragon i'd be like which dragon which dragon <laughs> like <laughs> you know, they, oh, dragon's got a name baby part? oh <laughs> uh, which direction did you come you know it's like yeah. you're just you're setting yourself up unless that person just asks you so are you a fan of dark souls they're like yes and like good i believe you let's talk about something else right now yeah then you're fucked yeah. uh, but i like i like you talking about Deciding what it is that you want to do because he's very general in in the um, in the question about uh, recording. Like it says, uh, I want to do more or less what you do, either creating gaming videos or possibly scripted content on the internet. I would say even that is which of those do you want to do? Yeah. Like if you want to do gaming videos, honestly, I'd say that the one of the first things you do, go fucking get on Twitch and learn how to do that right now. Right now. Even if it's just using your PS4 and the camera. Yeah. Start there. Right from there, uh, so you've been doing videos. You should already know kind of where you're going with it. I'll tell you right now, the shit's saturated as far as let's plays go. Like we're you know the let's plays on YouTube, so, so many. Yeah. There's so many. In fact, we if we started today, if I had to start this channel today, I don't think we would even remotely succeed right. uh, because there's just too much. There's too much static out there. It's hard yeah. to cut through. So. Twitch is great because if you if you concentrate on doing things like playing Bloodborne, the minute it's released, you start a Twitch stream and start playing it. You're going to find people out there who don't have it, like yeah. you, yeah. right? Who are looking for somebody playing whatever the hot new thing is, right? Yep. And you can, if you're good and you interact with people well, you can create an audience, right? Uh, also, finding anybody in your area or anybody that you know that's even remotely related to this stuff to try to get in with other people the all of this shit is so much of everything now i'm sure you can adjust yeah. for acting and all this stuff yeah comes down to social media comes down to knowing somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody i had a i had a good friend tell me it's uh it used to be 80 percent of what you can do and 20 percent of who you know right it's completely switched now it's 80 percent of who you know and 20 percent of what you can do but not only what you can do what you actually have done yeah and yep. so it's like you have to have 
the work ethic already established. You have to have like, if you already have videos, if you've already done this stuff, have that as your resume. Like, look, this is what I have done. Right. But at the same time, continue to do it while you're trying to get out there in the social world. Like, like the one thing I, I, I hate Twitter. I hate it. But I've just Me started. I, I just started getting back on it because, like, for instance, with Rooster Teeth. Yeah. Those their Facebook, like the 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 guys who have the positions right. within Rooster Teeth, their Facebook that is like their, like they don't pay attention to it. It's yeah. like friends, right? High schools, high school friends. Some family, because sometimes you want to post something on Facebook that your family shouldn't right. <laughs> really want to read. Right. But Twitter, you know, there's a guy on on from Rooster Teeth, seventy two point two thousand followers. That's one tweet. Wh- he, so, and I start breaking that down. I'm like, if he does one tweet, seventy two point two thousand people will see it. Yeah. I actually witnessed one day he tweeted a picture. Within 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. it had 256 favorites Mm -hmm. and 725 retweets. Yep. But that number combined, it still doesn't touch 72.2 thousand. And I was just, it just blew my mind away. And I was like, that is a medium where you literally, you can, it's given to you to follow people within the things that you like. I can't tell you how many fight choreographers and martial artists that I have on my Twitter. Yeah. Maybe three of them follow me, mm-hmm. but that's just, to me, I'm like, holy shit, they're following me. That doesn't mean they're going to like favorite my stuff. Right. That just means th- I'm on their blip. Yeah. They're big in their thousands of people. They've chosen to follow me. They might not be following a lot of people, which is even better for me. Right. But also at the same time, I'm now in their circle. So yeah. every time I tag them, everybody sees on their thing. And so it's all it's literally all about the networking. If you get that networking down and you already have a solid foundation of your work and what you can do and still do and you're still improving it's nothing it's it is it is probably the best jump and unfortunately the best jump off point right no, for that's, you to go into something absolutely because I mean, it can't be like it, I, I i'll go ahead and say this now there is no more instant fame no there's no more like there's viral virals viral things end like yes. it's like mm-hmm. it lasts for a moment and then it's over and like I've, I mean I, some of the folks that I used to work for over at Spill had said that like you don't you I'm like some people will try to manufacture viral stuff right yeah and they're like you don't want that because no. what's going to happen is that if you manufacture something that's outside of your normal wheelhouse and it goes viral you are going to get a lot of attention really quick and then next week when they see that that was one thing. They're all gone. Yep. They're off to the next thing, yep. right? You may get uh, you may get an increase in traffic yeah. and stuff like that, but you're not going to keep. You're not going to go viral and then stay up there forever. Yeah. Um, but I think that yeah, I think you make a really good point about if you have, you know, a solid social media presence, which fuck I don't, uh, but a solid social media preference as well as a solid w- like work a yeah. body of work, work yeah. right? Like. There's no better way to appeal to somebody than to go. You can watch this and see exactly who you're t- uh, who I'm talking about, and you can read all my tweets and know exactly who I am. Yeah, and that's evidence of what you're doing. Uh, all right, I got one more question, then we're out. This last one comes in from Patio, who says, "Okie dokie's Rage Select crew." I recently had to free up some storage on my work computer and came across a folder of video files that turned out to be amateur British BBW porn. What? So what are the weirdest treasures you found left over from previous employees? Employees? Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, okay. He was on his work computer. Okay, never mind. Oh, Hold on. okay. I'm gonna okay. be I'm gonna be the first one. Let's see, I'm gonna be the one to say it. Fuck Dogocles. Whoa, all hell Volva Fire Crotch who's whoa, blazing whoa. queef skin. Fell mighty armies in a single lip flapping. Whoa! Blessed be her magnificent mods and pubis of terrestrial hell, fire, hell, hellfire. All the best, patio. It was we made in Pillars of Eternity. They oh. had these god creatures, and they're 
on fire, and we made a lady one called Volva Fire Crotch. So. Volva Fire Crotch. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, no, I, okay, I get what he's saying now. He was on his work computer that is issued to him from work. He needed some space. He started looking around to see what was there and found somebody's hidden hidden amateur British BBW porno folder. I, You know what, Aaron? I'm going to say this right now. I do not understand looking at porno on your work computer. Like, even is before our phones that could access porno wherever you are, I'm just like, no. why would you want to get all fucking horny and shit at work? At work. And you definitely can't do anything with that. And if you could, blah, 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 you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Depending on your job. And if it's that kind of job, you shouldn't be getting a work computer. I mean, also, <laughs> like, why would you ever want to look at porn? I'm just going to put this out as an axiom for life, right? Why would you want to look at pornography if you can't take your pants off? There it is. Like, why would you ever want to be in a position to look at pornography when you got to keep your pants on the entire time? You're uh, just torturing yourself. Yeah. Um, I got one. Okay. Uh, the first computer I ever received from my family was a old desktop Macintosh. Okay. wasn't wasn't those the the it was it was the shit the OG like, Mac the OG you turn it on and it has a little mm -hmm. like hard drive face smiling at you or frowning at you to yep. let you know if something's wrong. I have that same computer. My father got it from a uh of a, a f old work friend whatever. And it was his personal computer, his personal computer yeah. that he used for work when he was at home. And mm. he was like, I'm getting rid of it. I'll clean everything out. And I don't get it. So I go home, I'm like, oh, Macintosh. I have no idea. I'm like, at school, I'm, we're all using PC, IBMs at right. the time. And so I had to go to the store getting Mac for dummies and stuff like that. So I was just like, oh, let me read this, how to turn it on. This is how you turn it on. All right, cool. I finally get the whole thing operating. And there is one lone folder uh -huh. on the desktop. And I was like, what is this? And I click on it. And it literally, and I had to ask my dad because I didn't know what it was. But I was just like, dad, what did this guy used to like do? Yeah. And he was just like, oh, he was a transportation specialist mm -hmm. in like Houston. Of like, what, he told me the year and everything like that. He still had every file of every like bus and every route and, and i was just like and so in my head like you know fantasy me i'm like i could become like a, a, like the bus warrior or something like that because like you know like um like how the shadow uses the taxis and stuff yeah. like that i go i could get a bus guy yeah you know and like i, I it's just it's just one of those things i was just like this shouldn't be on a little kid's computer no. And this guy, he that was been like that would have been the first thing I would have cleaned out because that's like some sensitive information right there, and so I was just like, this is back. I mean, that's that's the goddamn dark ages. Yeah, when like like moving the mouse to the edge of the pad and picking it up was something that yes. they had to teach you. Yes, right? yeah, so like, yeah. But I can almost I can almost say, all right. Fine. Like, you know, <laughs> also, computers were ultra expensive. So, like, if your disk that had your OS on it got fucked up, you had to go buy another one, and yep. it was really expensive. So, I can almost imagine that um, that working. Um, yeah, but that is crazy. You just like in today's day and age, that would be I mean, like a federal offense or yeah, something. Yeah, like it's. Like, I, I was like, it's, I was just like when he was thinking, I was like, oh man, yeah, I would be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> or like, that guy would be in jail because like I was, I was man, I don't. I was in, yeah, because, like, my brother hadn't even gone to college yet. So, yeah, I was in junior high, and, like, my brother was in high school. Because my brother, my brother got my mom's old computer, and my mom got a new compact. Right. And so my brother had the I IBM, and I got the crap Mac. And yep. I was just like, I hate this computer. I'm never going to use it. Because I couldn't play games on it. I yep. could, I'd have to, like, and my parents didn't want to buy me, like, the like the Mac stuff. Because yep. they are just like, no, that. Just use it. I'm like, I can't. The printer doesn't even connect to it. This is <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and I think that's why I hate Macs now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a Mac for a long time. And I don't know. Uh, I can tell you, let's see. I see. All right. I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I used to work for like a local computer store, right? Fix okay. computers for people. And um, so here's, here's a thing that I don't think most people understand. Right, you let's say your computer gets fucked up. Right. You have to take it to a local repair store. 
And they call you up and they go, okay, look, your OS is jacked. I got to reinstall Windows on here. Do you want anything off of your hard drive before I format it? And you go, no. And they go, are you sure? And you go, yes. And then you do do it. Or you go, ah, okay, let's see. I need all my music. Let's say I need all my pictures. Right. right. I think there's some videos on there as well. All right. So people have, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe they don't anymore. Maybe now the new generation is savvy. This was maybe five, six years ago, seven years ago that I was doing this. But what people didn't really seem to understand or what the people you would talk to didn't understand is that the only way for me to get all of your vacation photos is I have to look at, at, at your photos yeah. because I have to know, did you put it somewhere stupid? Are they all in your My Pictures folder? Are you sure? Because if I back up your My Pictures folder and you had a folder on your desktop that had your baby pictures in it and then I format your hard drive and you come back two days later and go, where the fuck are my baby pictures? And I go, they're gone. gone. Yeah. And then you're like, <laughs> I told you to back up my pictures. And I said, yes. And then I asked you if they were in your My Pictures folder. This is not an argument you can win. Because right. they're like, well, they weren't there. And I go, okay, well, I asked you and I don't want you to be mad at me. It's, yeah. it's Copy two folders instead of one folder, right? But what that means is that generally speaking, I need to look through your pictures. And not just like I need to look at the file names because they're all named garbage from your camera. Yeah. I need to look and see. Here's you in Italy. Here's you in Greece. Yeah. Here's you in the coast of Spain. Okay. And here's those are the you ones on the need. beach in the sand. Yeah. <laughs> and then every so often you're like, and that's you in the bedroom. Naked people. Photos. <laughs> over there. I worked with the douchey creep who like, uh, I'm like, dude, there's porno on the internet. Why are you looking at these people? Yeah. Saying? But. It's even worse if they want videos, right? Because you're like, I got to look at these videos because I got to see. Because you, generally speaking, are not naming every one of your videos and putting them in the same place. They're Correct. spread out all over your goddamn hard drive. And then God fucking help you if you need me to back up your email. Because that means that I got to look at your email. And there was one day where a guy came in and we had to back up his email. And we found some stuff in the email that you nobody should be having in their email. And because we, like, when you come across stuff like this, I will leave it to you. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When you come across stuff like this, you call the police. Yep. And the police come and you hand them the laptop and you go, this is the guy's name. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. Not before my boss took it in the bathroom and put a black light on it. And I was never more glad that I was not working on right. a computer <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, and then that guy comes back in and goes, hey, where's my laptop? And you go, here's the card of the detective that we gave it to. And he goes, what? And you're like, you so asked us to yeah. look at your, you Sorry, asked man. us to back up your email. And like, look, like, that's what happens, you know? And that guy was pissed, but it was just like, what? Do, I'm well, sorry. What do you expect, like, man? Yeah. You got, yeah. Um, so I suffice to say, I've seen some weird stuff. I don't. Want, I don't really want to go into specifics because I don't want to mess with anybody's privacy. But I've seen some weird stuff. I have seen. I know everybody takes the same vacation photos. Everybody takes the exact same goddamn selfie vacation photos. Guilty um, in the same places, <laughs> and they're always. You know, it's like I. Yep. There's. These boom, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Everybody goes to the same places. <laughs> oh, look, you're at the Tower of London, yeah, yeah. like everybody else was. See, the only difference about mine is most of my pictures are like barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people can just see that on Facebook. You I mean, it, I don't really have a computer to put all of that on, so it's all on my phone. <laughs> it's it's gotten a lot different with Facebook because a lot of people will put a lot of stuff on Facebook, yeah. right? But it's interesting because you really. You really okay, so you're working on somebody's computer, you talk to them on the phone, you've talked to them, you've seen them in person, you and then you're looking at all their pictures and you're listening to looking at what the music they've got, you're looking at like maybe some videos that they've got on their system. Yeah. And you get a real I mean, you could kind of make some assumptions about a person at that yeah. point. It's really weird. But and I want to make sure that I repeat this, like I don't go looking at people's personal information, right, yeah. but if you ask me to get all your shit, there's only one, one way, way I to can be to sure it, yeah. to get your shit, and that's to look at all your shit. So, yeah. And then, God help. Actually, before we end, because this is the last question, and then the person's porno folder, and you just go, I got to know no what... One. Yeah. Oh, uh, come yeah. on. Yeah. It's like, uh, what, what's your style? <laughs> and sometimes you go to somebody's porno folder and you're just like, this is terrible porno. Like, what? 
if you're gonna if you're gonna get your system full of spyware and spend yeah, money, it's like this at least is, let it be worth it. Yeah, <laughs> this is terrible pornography. Oh man. All right. Well, Patty, I hope that answers your question. Uh, that's it for our show this week. Uh, as always, we'll be back every Sunday with another episode of the Rage Slate Podcast. Aaron, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Been a good time today. Uh, we'll see you next time. And that's it. Later. Later.